Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. Check us out at that address for everything you need to know about our community, monthly giveaways, and nightly live streams. You can even support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 4player. And last but not least, you can catch the live recordings of these podcasts every single Thursday night on our Twitch channel. We hope to see you there. Enjoy. Welcome to Four Player Podcast. This is episode 757. It is May 25th, 2023. I am your host, Nick Henderson, joined tonight by Brad Simons. What's up? Christopher Guthridge. Uh, are you muted? Hello. Okay. <laughs> and Christopher Davis. Hello. All right. Uh, we got a good show for you tonight, everybody. Also, I, you know, we're going to get into housekeeping here in just a second, but since we're introducing everybody, I just want to let everybody know, you've probably noticed Nolan's not super present lately. He's got a lot going on, but I hear he's probably going to be back next week. So mm. look forward to that. In fact, I think his exact words in Discord were, next week is Return of the King. I'm pretty sure that's... the. <laughs> He's just going to open the podcast by laughing for 25 minutes straight. That's all he's going to do. You know, I I think, honestly, it's kind of a blessing that maybe he couldn't be on the show a ton right now around Zelda review uh, time. No, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it from that guy. (laughs) Well, you didn't have to. Zelda overperformed. He gets overperformed. It's not that good. Uh, So it's pretty good. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty good. good. We're going to talk more about Zelda tonight, of course, uh, but also we got a great show lined up because in addition to uh, Zelda, we got Humanity, we got Planet of Lana, we got that PlayStation Showcase, which is going to be the focus of our main, of our first segment. We're gonna, there's a lot of shit to talk about there. Um, and uh, there was an interesting question that Brad posed in Discord. He did, I didn't really talk to him about this beforehand, but I figured, fuck it, I kind of want to have this conversation on the podcast. Uh, and it has to do with review scores and in indie games. Uh, Brad probably knows what I'm talking about mm, now. We're going to get into wa- this craziness. I want to have that conversation at some point during the first segment. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but first, of course, housekeeping. Um, uh, if you're not aware, obviously, we've been doing our fantasy critics since, since the first of the year. It's going great for most of us. Some and of us. Uh, it's it's... It's a ton of fun. Uh, if you're not following along, one, I encourage you to go back and check out our first show of the year we, where we did our initial draft and then check out our, our actual current ranking and points and everything. It's a, We're having a great time. We'll be doing our fantasy critic update here shortly. Um, I also want to let everybody know that, you know, if you listen to our show, if you like our show, if you listen to it weekly and you're like, this is a great part of my week, go tell us that. Leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you and it helps us out by making our show more visible. So go wherever it is that you might listen to your show. If they let you leave reviews, whether it's just a star rating or an actual written review, we don't care. Let us know. We'd love, we'd love to hear from you and it helps us out tremendously. So do that. Um, but anyways, let's get into it. We got a lot to talk about tonight. Uh, and of course I want to start with the latest from fantasy critic. Here we go. No one's the only one with new points on the board this week. Planet of Lana, which we're going to talk about tonight in the second segment, uh, pulled in 11 points. So there we go. Nolan, more points for Nolan, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> everybody Yay. More points for Nolan. <laughs> oh, oh, you know what? Speaking of housekeeping and, and fantasy critic stuff, I, I feel like it's worth mentioning. We should maybe post this somewhere uh, other than just letting it disappear into the ether. But Brad did do a math stream this past mm-hmm. week, right? Propaganda you want to explain what this was? Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so my yeah, I encourage everybody to watch. There are timestamps pinned in our Discord channel for Fantasy Critic. I'll post uh, them in the show notes. What we did is with community crispy, with community input, we basically, you know, I, so so I listed out all the scores we had, and we sort of looked at the future, the games that we have drafted, um, and bid on. And sort of, sort of, kind of pick some middle ground scores, right? Not worst case scenario, not best case scenario. Realistic kind of, scores, honestly, where maybe things would shake out. Um, and you know, those scores were kind of discussed with chat, and we all said, "Okay, this is fair. This is fair. This is fair." We went through everybody's list, and then I kind of took for our open spots. I just sort of did like eighties, right? Because that's just kind of where most video games end up, and. 
just sort of based on those numbers, kind of figured out where everyone might be at the end of the season, especially because a lot of us already have a lot of games. And just sort of looked at basically how far are we away from Nolan, like kind of where we are. And then after figuring out those scores, kind of going back to each person's list and let's say, you know, uh, Nolan had a couple of bad bids and maybe we hit a couple of best case scenarios on people's lists. Like how, how, how realistic is it at sort of closing the gap and uh, some interesting results. So I recommend checking out the stream and I'm sorry. I didn't put armor core at a 92. What what was, what was with that? uh, I don't care what chat thinks. What, what, what what was your, what was your best case scenario score for armor core? Like an 82 or something? Uh, I think I had 85. It's not a nah. bad score. Nah. That's not 15 not. points on the board. Not That's not bad. I think you are ignoring... Not, everybody, not every game's best case scenario. It's You're just, ignoring... When I say best case scenario, they still have to be somewhat realistic. It's in the ether. You're ignoring the signs all around you. This is Fuck the year know. of Armored Core. <laughs> this is I it. I to reiterate what this I've been saying it. all season. The people are I ready! Just want to Despite what Crispy keeps saying all season long, my opinions on people's lists and games and picks have been sincere. There's no propaganda. I get nothing out of saying, oh, hey, I thought this oh, was, no. you know, uh, this this game's going to perform well or this game's going to perform not. The only times I've ever said, hey, you should drop a game were one, Dead Island 2, and two, Benedict Fox, which both of them should have been dropped. Oh, whatever. okay, 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 okay. Fine, but you know, look, look, look. Me- I'm not. I don't seriously think that you're lying for you know to to hurt anybody or for your benefit or for Nolan's benefit or anything like that. I think you're just wrong. <laughs> Armored Core. <laughs> Armored Core. It's coming. My dream was so like. You know, Watch I love the math that. stream. There was no <laughs> shenanigans here. I was just we were talking you know, with chat the entire time. I'm no, sure. I, I honestly I'm think sure the whole community is wrong. Everybody's <laughs> wrong. And they're all gonna be surprised, and everyone's gonna be like, you know what, Chris? You were right. You were you right. This armored core six is amazing. <laughs> Guys, you know what's the, the best part of this whole armor core thing is it is it is it has now become well, I never knew a mech game could be so cool. I never thought been, I could have so much fun playing a mech action game. It has become the best narrative as far on our fantasy league since the Mortal Kombat thing. Like it is, it is easily, it is so, easily the game oh, I have the most no excited to see. Well, hang on, now. hang on, hang on. Also, another, another. You, you, you were wrong about Warhammer 40k Space Marine. That's coming out. We just got a teaser for it yesterday. We just got a teaser for it yesterday, and it looks is, sick. This is proof you awesome. didn't watch my stream. This I watched proof. some of it. Do you, do you know how many points I gave you for Warhammer? 80? Yeah. Yeah, and you and you were like, and you can thank me for him. Because I'm, I'm saying you, man. if the game didn't ship, you could have dropped it and got an 80. If it does ship, dude, the first game by fucking Creative Assembly scored like a 74. What are you expecting? Wait, what okay. are you expecting? Guys. As a host, I'm going to go ahead and rein this in a little bit because <laughs> okay, we do need to sorry. move on. Mm. We got a lot to talk mm. about tonight. If you're interested, guys, mm. I encourage you. We're having a, we're having a fantastic time. Uh, <laughs> check out in our Discord at discordgg player. There's a fancy critic channel set up in there. You can see all of, like the day to day drama play out there. And of course, we talk about this every week. Um, we have one new bid. It's been, actually been a few weeks since we've had a new bid show up. Um, so there's actually one. a bid. There is a bid for the Talos Principle 2, which was announced and revealed for a 2023 release date during the PlayStation Showcase, which we will talk about here shortly. So we'll find out on Saturday who who gets that. Yeah. yeah. Somebody, somebody, I'm going to guess multiple people maybe have bid. Can I, can I give my opinion on on this or is it, or is it going to be propaganda? Mm, I don't know. Let's hear it. I really love that first game. It scored what mid eighties. That game has an eighty seven sure on Open Critic. Eighty seven on eight. Yeah. On I'm probably going to bid on this. I will say, Crow Team's track record outside of Talos Principle is not it's not good. great. So, not so great. I'm worried that 
I don't know. I don't. Know. I. You're worried that the serious as Sam a teams huge work on principal this? fan. I hope this is a really great game, but I'm not going to. But but now. let's be let's be real, guys. Like seeing seeing not only not only just in terms of like it's a sequel to the Talos Principle, but after watching that trailer, it felt to me like like this is like if they if they announced like Portal Three, like it just it's it's good, like it's just good. I hope so. I but, hope so. As a puzzle game, it's just if they announced the witness too, it'd be like the fuck of course. Fucking of course. Um no, Yeah, you're right, you're right. But remember, Talos Principle feels like a fluke. It's like, what do you call it? No, or, you know, it's when that so game came out, it's like good. this developer made it, it seemed It does. Absurd. It does it seems crazy. I don't think I would I don't think I would take a chance on any game outside of the Talos Principle from Crow Team. No. But but Talos Principle 2 looks great. Mm. It does not have an official final release date, yeah. but it's tw- it's just 2023 and I've been reading some interviews and stuff and they've been they're like coming out later this year. They seem pretty confident about it. Mm. And they've been developed. I definitely de- want to try it. Yeah, we'll see know. what the fuck happens. Okay. Um so that's it for Fantasy Critic. I'm sure it'll come up a few more times tonight. <laughs> but like I said, Justice. I want to get into news uh Speaking because of news. Importantly, that was the only thing from the Sony showcase that got right. bids this week. So, just so bef- I'm going. So here's how this is going to work because uh, we have a list here. It's the PlayStation showcase, which is essentially what w- they would have done if there was an E3. Right? Happened mm-hmm. yesterday, and I have the full list here. I- I'm not going to talk about everything. There's a lot to run down. So I've kind of like picked some things. Chris Davis put together some notes on everything, but I'm we're, we can't talk about everything. We just literally can't. There's too much. Um, but before we get into that, I, I do want to say, because Brad, you do have a point. Uh, this PlayStation showcase, I want to kind of get, to get, get the temperature of where y'all feel about it. Because on one hand, I walk away from it being very happy because there is a lot of stuff from this show that I care about that I'm excited about. But the kind of like the elephant in the room is that it was an hour straight of announcements. And I don't think we, we, we know anything about Sony first party lineup beyond Spider-Man 2 that we didn't know going into this. Which yeah, is kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. Well, um, I don't know. I mean, I was no, wrong no, about no, them no. spending half an hour on that controller. You were wrong about but that. But I was right <laughs> about the fact that everyone was going to be like, eh, I don't know. Didn't really feel but, that. But, but, but again, but again, I want to reiterate because there's a lot of stuff here to be excited about. But like, but this fir- quote unquote first party showcase ended up feeling like a third party showcase for PlayStation. In fact, Microsoft had some like snarky tweet that they were they had prepped and ready for <laughs> after this thing aired. Uh, which was basically like, oh man, look at our lineup. It looks great. And it was like almost everything that they showed at the PlayStation thing. Obviously, with the exception of like, Spider Man, like almost yeah. everything shown at the showcase is playable, is going to be playable elsewhere as well. Not all, but a lot. Um, so it's, it was a very third party heavy showcase, which is very strange. That's never, I feel like that's never really happened uh, with Sony. Um, so let's get into it. I, like I said, I'm going to like maybe name drop a few things, but like I don't want to w- spend much time on a lot of this stuff. Uh, they announced Hell Divers 2, which is like a, I don't know. I don't want to talk about that. Immortals of Avium? Uh, Hell Divers 2 looks kind of fucking sick. Can we talk about yeah, that? Yeah, that looks fun. That's supposed to be coming out this year. Uh, okay. I mean, if, you wanna over- if you want to override me, that's fine. So, Hell Riders 2. What do you want to say about Hell Riders 2? Because I know it has it Divers. Before. Hell Divers. Oh, what did I say? Hell Riders. Hell Riders. Oh. <laughs> Have you, did it's you a, played the first Hell Divers, Nick? <laughs> no, I did not. Do you know what it is? It's a very, the first one's a very different game, though, right? It wasn't like yeah. a. This is like, I mean, this is almost like what Risk, Risk of Rain did, where it was like the first one was this very simplistic, like twin stick shooter almost, yeah. like top down. Sure. And now they're going like full on 3D action online yeah. multiplayer. They just, thing. they just, the cool. cameras kind of zoomed in a little, yeah. Honestly, like, this looks like that Starship Troopers game that is like just coming out now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which I guess the only difference is that one has like up to 16 players. I don't know. I'm more excited about this than I am the Starship Troopers game. Yeah. This I'm looks just, sick. I mean, That's I just fair. want to point out that this is the developer Arrowhead Games, the one behind Magic Magica and uh, 
I mean, Magicka was a really good co-op uh, experience. Uh, so was Helldivers. And Helldivers was uh, as well. Can, but, can, I, can yeah. I say about Helldivers, though? Like, the, the one thing that, to me, about it that felt unique was that it was a cooperative, kind of like a horde base, you know, cooperative yeah. game where you're shooting things together. But, like, the thing about it was it was friendly fire. And because it was, like, a twin stick on a plane positioning was like super important because mm-hmm. it was very easy to sort of get in front of your teammates. But if it's a 3d game where you can aim your reticle where you want, doesn't that kind of go it, away a little bit? I, I don't know. Probably. Mm-hmm. I think it might be Maybe. more dangerous. That was such a key mm-hmm. component. Well, I don't, I don't know about more dangerous. I think I think it's less dangerous. Hey, but, I think, you know. I think it depends on the weapon you're using. Like there, there's yeah, probably some, I like, guess the weapons would stuff. have to be like, have heavy springs think, or something. Well, I think the important thing about this is that, they still have capes, and that's pretty cool. Mm, yeah, capes. Capes are mm-hmm. a right. part of Hell Divers. Capes mm-hmm. or Hell mm-hmm. Riders, the game that Nick's never heard of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so okay, again, if, what else? Like, we feel free to override me, but I'm gonna kind of blow through a lot of these. Um, Immortals of Avium, which we've seen before. The only thing I want to yeah. say about this is like it's it's like a new it, it's like a new IP. And it seems like they're going for something like, you know, it's first person using magic and stuff, which seems like on a surface level, it should be pretty cool. I walked away from this feeling like that was a big nothing sandwich. It did I mean, nothing. It, it kind of looks all. like, you yeah, know, Call of Duty meets uh, the comet of Ghostwire Tokyo. Like, OK, huh? but sure. I, I mean, I think the kind of interesting thing here is that this is by a combination of both ex Call of Duty devs and surprisingly ex Telltale devs. So a weird combination and I, yeah i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to linger on this I, I just want to say like it's one of those things that looks like it should be more impressive than it ultimately ends up feeling like i just mm-hmm. walked away i was like i don't i felt nothing while watching this trailer but whatever uh that's immortals of avium that's coming out july 20th though so that has a yes. date mm-hmm. um ghost also, Runner 2 just, which i don't think we knew about this already or did we that, good trailer yeah that was, was a good, good trailer one. uh that was the first time they announced it um i also want to mention that a lot of the games i don't know if you looked at my notes specifically but uh, most of these games are multi-platform. There's very, very few PS5 that's exclusives. Yeah, that's what, that's what I that's what I spent. That was he the said, introduction to my like whole everything. Series. But well, then I missed. I, I thought we were talking about first party, but okay. It's Come a very on, third, it's Davis. Third, that's why I said this is a very third-party focused first pers- first party showcase. It's bizarre. Um, the shit out your ears. So honestly, the first highlight for me of the of, of this of this presentation was Phantom Blade Zero, and. Mm. I'm going to be honest. At first, I saw I thought we were watching a new tr- gameplay trailer for Rise of the Ronin, which was announced last year, I yeah. think, because um, it looks it's like a, you know, samurai like ga- third person action game, samurai, whatever. Uh, very dark, very gritty. Um, but in fact, this is this is I read the blog post that they put on PlayStation's blog, which I thought was really interesting because this is actually a game that is developed by uh, S game. And it's a series that they've been working on for years. It's called Phantom Blade. Yes. And it, it's big in China. It never really made it outside of China. And it was developed, it was a mobile game developed with RPG Maker. So this is not only is this, what? this, yeah, that's crazy. But this is not just that. But like, this is the first time this, this series is, is going out beyond, you know, it's going outside of China. It's going worldwide. And it's their jump to console development using Unreal Engine 5. It's it's just it's it's weird. It's but it's like a really interesting like kind of origin story for this for this I'll game. Which is, well, see well, just just yeah. to clarify two things. Number one, uh, this is a co-developed project between two different studios. Actually, uh, S game and Cool Man, Man Studio. One? <laughs> uh, one's Beijing developer. One is a Hong Kong developer. Uh, and yeah, this, this is one a feels s- like a this feels like a trap. I mean, I mean it, just like Black it, Myth, right? Like Black Myth looks really cool, but has anybody seen it or I played mean, it in a while? When is that coming out? You know, I, I don't it's, know. No. It's like these are developers we've never heard of, which makes me a little uneasy. The um, The problem because... I saw in watching the footage is that apart from the character running and a few select combat cuts, like a lot of it looks like it's like automated gameplay. Like, I mean, especially those parries pretty... he was doing against enemies, like constantly cutting, like the, pretty much the visual highlight of that dim, that demonstration <laughs> was. It looks like they that removed tenor. button prompts from, yeah. from the screen. Yeah, it's like it's like we're watching like a new version of Ninja Blade. OK, yeah. I, I do want to I do want to say, I mean, first of all, that's not uncommon for trailers. We all know this. Like, it's, it's one of those things like they're trying to make it look more 
it's they're trying to like highlight the things that look really cool and make it feel less like a video game <laughs> for the for marketing purposes. Yeah. So when next time we see this, I, I don't I'm not sure if you'll still feel that way. But I also think this is kind of like the other game, which was strange has strangely been absent from PlayStation marketing for like a year and a half now, which Stellar Blade. Which has been like I feel like this is like that like we're not gonna see or hear about this game again for another two years probably, um, but I think it looks cool and uh, you know the combat looks it's the very like kung fu base like it it looks. It Does it cool. feel good to play? Is it actually Nobody a game? Knows. You know, it, it's just no. always so. It's not um, open world though. It's interesting. Like they did specifically say it's not open world. It is handcraft large handcrafted areas that are interconnected. So, which sounds a little bit more to me like Neo than than you know something more open. So, or, I, I, or maybe yeah, like a Neo is design. Team Ninja and they've released right. games and they're good at That's making games. And I just wanted to highlight this. I, I know they have a lot to prove. I wanted to highlight it though because I do think it looks cool. But they have a they we really need to see more and and somebody needs to get their hands on it and tell us if it's good or not. That's one thing about the fact that E three is no longer a thing. It really sucks is because when the the next time that we hear about somebody playing this. It's going to be, you know, some like very carefully crafted or controlled environment where they invite people to play it and then they write about it. Right. Which yeah. kind of sucks. Unlike E3, Before where we, we could go to it and bring it and then come back and talk, talk about it. like this would be a perfect game to, to, to play at E3 and then come tell people like, OK, what is this? But that's not the world we live in anymore. Um, all right. Next, we had Sword of the Sea, which is from Giant Squid, the next the team that did Abzu, yes. Pathless and Journey. Uh, and it looks really cool. It looks very journey esque, and also like Giant traversal. Do journey? No, no, no. Developers who worked who on ab. No, the developer, one of the developers from who worked on Journey, formed the studio, made Abzu and the Pathless. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, the Pathless yeah, is pretty, really stinking good. Both, both yeah, and it, it's got a, they got a great track record, and like the traversal in this like game looks very much kind of like your skateboarding or wakeboarding or like uh hmm. you know I don't know it it but like on sand and water and shit like it looks it looks really cool it's it giving me journey vibes I don't think they specified a date I think they said maybe, no release date yeah I don't think they said anything about release date yeah. or window I'm waiting on it uh the Talos Principle two which we already talked about don't think we need to say anything more there. Um, Neva, which is from the studio that made Gris. Do you remember that game? Yeah, Greece. Uh, sure. Yeah, this is coming 2024, but it does look cool. Just I mean, it looks pretty indie stuff. Pretty, pretty really indie stuff. Of a game there. That was the Devolver um, game. Yep. Uh, Chris Davis is game of the year. Cat Quest: Pirates of Peribi of the. On Peribian. your notes, I specifically marked out that little joke you had, and you accepted yeah. that co that suggestion. And then I feel I betrayed. Just, but anyways. the game actually looked pretty good, right? I mean, what what was this showcase like? So much of this shit's not even coming out this year. What what what? what Sony sipping that's why, a little it's bit a of weird, that, that Xbox. Uh, it's a uh, weird showcase. Delayed. It's a weird showcase. Like I said, uh, Foam Twisted Stars. Man? I know. I'm, Foam Stars know. looks like just a Splatoon knockoff. Next. Yeah. Uh, uh, hang on. Hang on. Uh -oh. oh my god! Uh, I knew he was in trouble. There, oh, there, there might be a little hung up on films. Uh, no, no. I, I just wanted to mention something real quick. Is that <laughs> They haven't formally announced who the development team is on this project, but it might be the ones that did Dragon Quest Builders. What? It doesn't look good. Oh, I mean, this is Square Enix, right? I did. Yeah. See that. It could yeah, be, okay. but could, who could knows? Be the Left Alive devs. Uh, it could be. Next game, Plucky Squire got a new trailer. Which still Can I just cool. say, still says the Plucky Squire's beginning to look a little racist. Maybe yeah. even just transphobic. Big, straight up big, big. And not that good, and I don't Cancel. think anyone... Wait, wait, what did I miss? Yeah, I don't think anyone should play it. I mean, it looks like Plucky they're Squire. fucking shit. with us, Nick. Fuck it's a joke. this game. Don't buy Plucky Squire. Yeah, okay, I, I, wait a second, wait a second. I I'm feel just like... saying, I heard that the Squire said some things... Oh, racist thing facebook okay i just want everybody to know if you're listening to this podcast i can't tell if these guys are being serious right now or no it's it's a fantasy shit. critic joke they're they're fucking around because that's a nolan pick people are pissed because it's a nolan pick nolan's got this game and it's starting to look pretty good i don't know but no look, but this is a... it's starting to look pretty racist what <laughs> i hear no evidence to back this claim up so i'm gonna keep moving um tear down it's getting a ps5 port whatever uh, all right, here's the here's the next big one. We've heard rumors. That game's pretty cool. 
I yeah. heard it too. I'm just saying, but it's a port. We've, it's 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 a thing already. Okay. Uh, first big announcement. One of the first really big announcements of the show, and this is one that's been rumored for a while, um, and we got confirmation of it. Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater. It's a remake of Metal Gear Solid Three. Here's what I here's what I find very interesting about this. Um, and I know I know Chris Davis, you have something to add here about this, so I'll let you do that in just a second. But I do find it very funny that uh, so the Metal Gear the Metal Gear uh, Twitter account kind of came to life, obviously after after this announcement was made, and they posted a, a message from the development team, and they don't fucking say who the development team is. Which seems like a really important piece of information when it comes to the because because obviously Metal Gear Solid has been for its entire life intrinsically linked to Hideo Kojima and his studio. Obviously, it's not Koji Pro Mercury Steam, but like like it says a message from the development team and there's this big long paragraph about like how excited they are blah 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 and you know what it, why it's a special project and it's signed at the bottom, the development team. <laughs> yes. But who are you? Like, I just, I just want to know. And for that, I will let Chris Davis, he has some theories, I guess, or there's some evidence out there that it might be a okay. studio from where? Okay, so the the word on the street is that the developer is virtuous. They are a, uh, they are a Chinese uh, support and port company. Uh, yeah, they work, the- hang on. They've worked on a bunch of stuff. They did uh, ports on a... Final Fantasy X and Ten Two. They did Batman Returns Under Arkham. They worked on Horizon. They worked on XCOM Two. They worked on a bunch of stuff, doing ports okay. and and support. It's work. just a strange. It's a strange studio to hand the keys for like one of the most beloved. It's not necessarily strange. I mean, if a developer, I mean, no, no, no. if they I'm pitch a it's project not, well enough and they pitch it at the right price, of course Konami is going to throw no, the money. I get out. it. I get it. I get it. It's not uncommon, but it is a little disheartening to see snake eater is like not only is it metal gear it's like one of the most beloved metal gear solid games ever made and it's and like a, it, it's a lot of video games yes yeah, a lot of it's a, so what we do know about this project what they have said themselves and there are screenshots floating around it does look nice we haven't seen there's the game itself yeah yes. there's screenshots out there of, it is of a gameplay yes of gameplay it is a quote unquote, according to this, according to Konami, quote unquote, a faithful remake of Metal Gear Solid Three, using the original voice cast. Now I don't know if that means the original voice cast is returning to record new voices, or if they're literally just using the old voice work. I don't know. They don't I, specify this. So until they say otherwise, I'm gonna bet it's the latter. So yeah, the word the word on the street is good. that they're gonna reuse the original voice recordings. Um, because evidently they may have the masters, and so they're going to use what is that word on the street. Who did you meet on the yeah, street? That Twitter. <laughs> just I also, I know, stuff I I've been it. reading from sources. I, I want to remind everybody that Chris Davis also heard on the street about s- some misinformation. <laughs> Chris Davis. Chris Davis is in uh, is in like a secret game journal. Can, can I somewhere. can I fucking finish? Okay. Like a Jason Scryer's like secret Discord. <laughs> Heaven forbid I I read and listen to some people. So yes, they it looks like they're going to be using the original voice yes, recording, <laughs> but evidently the scope of the design of this game is that they are staying faithful to the level geometry. So it's not going to be like a, a gigantic massive open world experience. It's no. going to be something that's very, very feasible to the level design and architecture of that original experience. Do you know what this remind? You know what this sounds like to me, and I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. This sounds to me like the Demon Souls remake, except it's not Blue Point, and that's. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I, I think that's know. the best I case scenario, know. though, right? Yeah, like if some no-name like crap studio, like crap studio, who knows? Uh, some no-name studio was to like do like a reimagining of some Kojima Metal Gear game that's beloved. Like, I don't want that. That's probably going to be a disaster. Like the, I think the best case scenario is a demon soul situation. Just no, like I think, I so too. think blue point as awesome as they are at graphics probably shouldn't be like making their own souls games, you know? So whatever, that's fine. Although one day I do hope we get to see what that looks like because 
it would be really cool to see Blue Point break away and do something original okay. and then have it be yeah. good. No, I'm sure. just saying, like, imagine if we, like, the only way we'll ever know is if someone lets them do something original. That's, That's the only their way project we'll they're out. working on maybe right they now. Could, maybe they're Hideo Kojima. That's maybe what, they're, they're, they have, they're amazing visionaries. But I'm just saying. We'll never I'm just know. saying. I don't know. I think we will know. All right. In addition to this. Um, also, real in quick, addition to this, uh, Snake Eater is a multi-platform release on PS5, Xbox, and Steam. Yes, this is also not a first party release. Um, in addition to the Metagross Solid 3 or Delta reveal, we got the announcement that the Metagross Solid Master Collection is coming this year, which will have Metagross Solid 1, 2, and 3, like the originals. Um, in and multiple it says, volumes, though. In multiple volumes, which seems to imply that we're also going to get other ones. I think the, the hope here is that maybe Metagross Solid 4 will, will finally not be... Oh, I don't even give a shit about that. You know what my hope is? You know what my hope is? that they do right by Metal Gear Solid 1 because the other ones are fine. They've gotten HD remasters, not Metal Gear Solid 4, whatever. That game's kind of <laughs> mid anyways. The truth is Metal Gear Solid 1 is one of the greatest games of all time, and it's been stuck on the PS1 with those oh, like, old graphics and those old camera angles. And this is not things. a remake. Well, it's count. also on PC. So, like, they, they need... Yeah, but how do you remaster that and make it look good? That's my question. Well, like you the thing need... is, supposedly from what I've been seeing and of these screenshots, what like the street? they're they're not. No, I've been seeing like screenshots from I this. It's it's not a remaster. It's not anything like that. They're just taking the old PS One stuff and not even doing any upscaling or even anti aliasing on it. They're not even using the up res assets from the PC version. So, yep, this like seems said, like they refuse to do right by Metal Gear Solid 1, which is one of the greatest games of all time. So mm. they're idiots. The only I mean, consolation that's the one they should remake. Why are they remaking three? Why three had, you know, subsistence and it got the new camera angle and then it got there's an HD remaster of that game. It's in it. it it's fine. Let money, Metal Gear money. Solid 3 live on like the great it game is... that it is. Remake Metal Gear Solid 1. What are they doing? It is a it is weird that Metal Gear Solid's reintroduction as a franchise is going to be a remake of three. I, I would say they're not doing one because they're, they already look at it as we've already remade one once. Uh, yeah. I, I worry, I worry, I worry that as much as all of us love this game, myself included, when it comes out, it's not going to have been worth this length of conversation. I don't know. I mean, there's a real, there's a serious chance this is just like shit, right? All I'm going to say is Chris Davis, when it comes to it, do not let Brad borrow your copy. Yeah, I know. I fucking story. know. <laughs> get, 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 Gamer Break's bringing up a pretty good meme in chat. I feel like, I don't know if it's in our Discord or what, but it seems like anytime I ask them like question, like, why did this game developer eat his own duties? Because money, Brad. Because money. Like, that's the answer to every question <laughs> there like, are I, what are I mean you talking about why is, I, I do, why does metal gear solid 3 over metal gear solid 1 equal money it's no like they I, I, like, be like the one that they think will crime. sell them. all right we're moving on we're moving on um oh, i don't okay. know what to say about this one i watched the trailer for it again and was like okay i'm not sure what to think about it maybe somebody else does uh towers of agaspa agaspa uh it looks agaspa. sick I no i mean it looks cool. It, it looks, looks pretty sick. cool. It looks uh -oh. like they're trying to do like a. It looks like they're trying to do like a Breath of the Wild meets fucking Valheim or some shit. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a, it's like a civilization that's trying to like bring life back to the land or whatever. So you're like trying to reinvigorate. Like everything looks drab and whatever, and you're exploring this world, and it's it's kind of like yeah. kind of like a survival game, but you're instead of the yeah. focus being on survival, it's about kind of like revitalizing the land yeah exactly which looks cool in theory mm. i i just i don't know i don't know i i, I don't know how i feel oh, but yeah hates it. oh I, nicholas I that. here's the thing i go to sleep telling myself every night never forget papo eo remember papo eo no i never, forgot ne never forget that's all i have to say keep going all right, uh, Final Fantasy 16 got a new trailer. No demo, though. I think that's the highlight of this, was that they didn't announce the demo that they, they basically already said exists yeah. that's coming. They, they didn't. I'm, I thought that I'm was... Actively trailer was pretty high. Final Fantasy 16 I am done point. watching fucking trailers for this game. Just fucking put yeah, it I mean, out and don't put out any more Look, fucking marketing for it. It is I mean, a lot it's, of trailers. It's, I'm going to go on a media blackout like Nick. 
Um, well, I don't well, know what you're making fun of me for in that regard. But hey, okay. I mean, to be fair, that trailer was pretty hype. It was pretty. No, cool. but it's not. I'm tired of it seeing was. these fucking trailers. I'm like, hey. epic summons and summons and summons and double may cry combat and summons. Like it's all nonsense. It's all gobbledygook. It's I stop it. I don't want to see know, any more of this shit. Just let me play the fucking game. Dude, it looks sick. It. it looks sick. Let me let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. I I am very very excited for Final Fantasy 16. It was my first draft pick for a reason. Oh. I'm very excited for this game. I stopped. I did quote unquote go on a media blackout. Track, I stopped. So. I haven't watched the last like two or three trailers. What I want to say though is that like you can't the marketing because it's nonsense. The marketing has been so focused on like these big epic like summon battles or whatever. I am so excited for this game, and it has almost nothing to do with the combat or the summon battles. <laughs> like, wait, it's such so a weird. What is it then? It's just like that's what the game is. It's 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 just the vibe. The world looks like my jam. The story. I'm obviously excited to to dig into that. I mean, like I'm sure once I get get my hands on it and I start playing around with the combat, I'll be like, okay, this is pretty cool. But like watching footage of someone doing the fighting and that and using the combat system in this game isn't doing much for me to like make me more excited than I already am. I'm just like, they're just they're just hammer like like he said like Chris Davis said they're just hammering the marketing on this really hard, which, you know, maybe that's for the best because Final Fantasy as a series does need a win right now. I, I mean, mean, Final Fantasy 14 is constantly obviously. get yeah. wins. What the fuck you know what the win is? You know what the win is, Nick? When that trailer started and Creative Business Unit 3 flashed up on screen, it's like, yes, this is perfect. Why I'm tired of it's going to be great. Right? It's going to be great. It's, it's because no, wait. no one is happy with the shit they're seeing. They just keep hearing that it's from the 14 people and they're like, it's going to be great. And it's I believe them, but that doesn't mean these trailers are, are like, I'm not sick of them. You know, I'm not sick of seeing like, not because it, wait, 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 what was that? What was just, that? It's, game? Just, it's just hype. It's just quick cuts what? of like big set piece moments, and it's what, that's what not was how you show off a game. What was that one game that they showed that we kept seeing tra the trailers for for like four years, and we were like, we gotta stop. I don't know. Yeah, you guys know. all get weirdly sensitive to trailers. Like no, no, I, mean, I, I noticed think, that. I've I think, noticed I that this. there's a lot of the, yeah, but like so what? So fucking I just, what? No, I know. <laughs> I do think Brad and Chris Davis were maybe blowing it more out of proportion than I wanted to, but I do. There was a now I'm just going to drive oh, me crazy. Like, there was like, a, like like fucking Death Loop or something. You guys yes, were like, it's well, there's too many Death Loop trailers, and we still don't know what the game is. Blah, 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 yeah. Also, like, um, Cyberpunk. They like hit us way too hard with all that bullshit towards the end. It's like, stop it. All right, moving on, moving on to the biggest news of the day. Fucking Alan Wake 2, which I did not think was going to show up at the Sony thing. Uh, it, it popped up here. Um, and one confirmed October 17th, 2023. Woo! You know what? I'm coming for you, Carlos. He counterpicked that game. He can't drop oh, it, baby. Oh, I hope Boy. it sucks. Suck, 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 suck. This is my... This, this is without you a doubt my Wake two sucks. That's not very nice. <laughs> this is without a doubt my most anticipated game of the year. Um, the trailer looked phenomenal, and, and it it drove home the idea. I mean, first of all, we got like actual details about what the game actually is, and, like the story and how it connects to the original, whatever. But we got some new details, like the fact that there's two playable characters. It's Alan Wake and this like FBI agent that's in town trying to investigate a murder, and they suspect Alan Wake of with, committing with that murder. Her, with her partner, who is Sam with Lake, her... voiced by the Max Payne voice actor. Oh. I'm pretty sure the Max Payne voice actor is Sam Lake. Can no. maybe somebody... Can no. somebody... I'm, is it, Sam is that Lake was the, the face of Max uh, Payne oh, in the first okay. game. Gotcha. Oh, they yeah. I guess that him in the okay. sequels. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're, like yeah, I just, I just really video the, game than the first one though, right? It's all like survival horror, like it yeah, looks like I mean, Resident Evil or something. It does oh, look wow. way more like Resident Evil now, which you know, just I just wait. Like, I here here's here's my here's my only concern, not concern, but it's like you know when they first announced this game like last year, it, they were like we're going full survival horror, right? And I watched this trailer and I think it looks amazing, but it it is make it is reminding me very heavily of like Resident Evil 4, 5, whatever, you know, that style of game, which is great. I just hope that 
it is like they're not just making it like look like it controls like Resident Evil and calling it survival horror for that reason because t to me survival horror is way more about resource management and having very limited resources and being very tense because of that so my well, hope first is game that wasn't that uh right i know the first game wasn't that so i'm saying if they really want this game to be survival horror like they've been saying from the very beginning it can't just look like and control like resident evil 4 you need limited resources you need ammo needs to be scarce you just like it needs to be tense for be, but so you are more like the evil within. Yes, absolutely. No, I was actually getting evil within two vibes watching this trailer. And but like nothing they showed in the trailer kind of confirms one way or the other how they're doing resources. Um and the only reason I'm a little concerned about it is because obviously Alan Wake One wasn't that and ammo, you know, wasn't as big of an issue in that game. Yeah, it was an action. So game. It was an action game. Like you were finding ammo every which way. You never really run out. There's very few instances in that game where you run out of ammo and it becomes frightening because of that. So my only concern is that they really do dig into what it means to be a survival horror game beyond just the it looks and feels like you're controlling a character in a modern well, resume. I don't so, think we have anything to worry games. about. Dude, I'm, dude, I'm yeah. so fucking excited for this. But dude. the biggest part, the biggest aspect of this news is that we found out that Alan Wake 2 is a digital only release. They are not releasing yes. a they are not releasing a physical version of this game and No, your collection. What is no, that okay. all about though? Is that, are they well, self-published? They no, they're published by Epic Games. Um Oh, that's why. So No, I mean the reasoning that they're giving is aside from like they they had this spiel about how, you know, so many so much of the core audience is now shifting towards digital only they're just adopting it but they said they don't want to release a disc that also requires a download like they don't they don't like the they don't like the look of that like like jedi survivor you could buy that game and day one patch aside you can't play that game off that disc there was a you they had all 50 gigabytes on the disc and then they, there was like an additional huge download that had to go with it so like even if you had the disc you couldn't play it unless you downloaded it. So it was kind of like, what the fuck is the point? They don't mm. want to have to do that, which I think also speaks to kind of like the scope of this game. It sounds like it's pretty big, not super surprising there, I suppose, but they don't want to, they don't like the look of that. So they're not doing that. I um, would not be surprised course, if sometime in late 2023, they do a game of the year edition that comes oh, on a disc. I mean, they're already being, the being actively courted for uh, printing. Eventually you guys, you guys are just trying to drag this out. Aren't you? What are you yeah. even talking about? What? Who what cares? Who cares if it's on a disc? I, I mean, care? that is big. That is big news. Now, Why here's is the thing. Big news? It is because it's pretty big. I, I really don't understand. understand. I've never the, seen this before. Like a major AAA release all of a sudden go, we're not going to do a physical copy. That's the reality. The reality yeah. is still that there are people out there who don't have Internet that can doubt sure. that. that that can do this so like that that okay. problem that we all laughed at microsoft for for even suggesting they did you know however many years ago that was at this point like that reality still exists so it doesn't affect me it doesn't affect any of us here but there are probably a lot of people out there who are excited for alan wake who are like how the fuck am i gonna play this now because they just they don't have the, the infrastructure to support the game so okay who knows what's, what's gonna you're happen right. Right. so it is new with your phone what i'm smart Oh, I see what you're, you're right. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just I I really had like an instinctual feeling like you guys. It is not. It is not going to talk it. about Alan Wake Two as much as possible. Nick, it's a remedy game. I want to hit back on that point that Brad brought up. It's a remedy game, which is um, great. Is is a recipe for disappointment. Oh, unless unless Whoa. you're looking for <laughs> unless you're looking for a third person action shooter. Uh, sure, you're gonna be I am. Disappointed. Okay. I am. It's not gonna okay, be a survival here. horror game. I have I have Look, loved man, Alan Wake is for the story boys and they're gonna be happy. Yeah, dude, I, I guess dude, I've, I've loved Alan Wake, Quantum Break, <laughs> Alan Wake, Quantum Break, and Control. I've loved all those games. You know what all those are? You liked Quantum Break. You like Quantum Break. It was on my top ten. Quantum Break. They're all dude. three third person <laughs> action shooters. I have said this before. Any game that I put on my top ten list any year is a game that I love. I can actively say I love I, it. I could, I, I fuck you. I think, yeah, he could don't make yeah. me pull up the list. <laughs> we could, we could find a Sophie's Choice that you would take over that. You know, what you had on your top ten, Detroit Become yeah. Human. 
And I loved my experience with that game. I literally did. But I also oh, said you, very specifically. You loved your experience or you uh, loved, yes. you loved yes, no. Detroit? Yes, no. Detroit. Okay, Brad, we're going to so really have this conversation. Game, Nick. I loved the game. Okay. I loved the game. But I I'm also very much love David Cage. Can I'm you also sorry. Can up for a second? I, 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 I loved that game. But I also very, I openly admit that, especially after we talked about it a lot on the podcast, I was like, holy fuck, my experience was totally different than like Crispy's, for instance. And I can totally understand why you like, like game. you like <laughs> that I had a bad experience. You're like, this game's good because like not even everybody gets like the good game. Like, some people oh get God. the weird robot holocaust. <laughs> yeah, that, that didn't happen in my game. That did so not stupid. happen in my game. So uh, which was, which is just a hilarious. I knew you were going to bring up the yeah, point. Yeah. I, just say you want to kiss David Cage, Nick. You want to kiss oh. him. Fuck that man. That guy's got the, that's got, got the Star Wars game. You're going right. to go. <sighs> Can we move on? Oh my uh, God. I, yes, I, please. I like, you remember the robot who like leads the revolution, you know, uh, at the end? And, and, and and to like you know all the people and, and then the, all the cops are like lined up like the riot police or whatever and then they like rush them revolution and there was one Irish clip where he's like i'm not pressing anything <laughs> and the cops <laughs> beat the shit out of him. <laughs> oh, oh my god okay this like that like, game <laughs> all right sorry. Uh, what else we got Assassin's can we get Creed to the Mar- actual Sh- news nick no Assassin's we, Creed? we got a lot to go through I, it, it y'all, is y'all are derailing this more than I am here. I'm trying yeah. to go through this at a steady clip. Assassin's Creed Mirage. I'm not going to spend a lot of time because I know I'm like yeah. the, probably the only person here is super excited yeah. for this game. Actually, um, but it, I the Assassin's is... Creed's Baroque period has ended, and this is a re- this is the revival period. We are back to Assassin's Creed ass looking Assassin's. It looks Creed. like a remake of the first game. Yeah, it, it, that is here's it started here's out the thing about that. this game. Here's the thing about this game. They're, they've they've reduced the scope of this, of this game dramatically, which is probably going to be more akin to like the original Assassin's Creed. It's more focused on assassinations and stealth. I think the word Unity has been thrown around, and there's a lot of stuff to actually lo- really like about the, the Unity, even though it had a lot of technical problems back in the day. So I think there's reason to be excited for this. It's coming out in October. That's all I'm going to say about it. October 12th. Uh, and it's on Chris Davis's list, so he's probably yeah. excited about it to some I mean- extent. No, I'm, I'm legitimately interested. This is the first Assassin's Creed I've been interested in since Black Flag. Yes, really. but it is not It is not a remake of one any longer. It is a new but, story. We'll see what happens. Oh, my God. We got to But a remake <sighs> of one is expected to be part of an expansion pack to this game. That's not what we're talking about here. <laughs> Revenant Hill, which I think is a sequel to Night in the Woods. It's it not is, a sequel. It is not a sequel. Successor spiritual so isn't that little fox creature that we see in the trailer isn't that no, in Night of- no, it's a, it's a cat it's a and cat. it's oh. no it, that's oh just my their, god. their mascot oh my god i can't believe you <laughs> i, didn't play Night I hate Woods. you i know i know because you were too busy playing alan wake and whatever assassin's creed was out at the time I, 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 uh, mm, 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 are we actually sure it's not related to night in the woods because it, it no, is i mean we're i looked it up like, it's 100 percent not related okay apart what from our design it's not related at all all you need, all we need to say here is that Revenant Hill is very clearly a spiritual successor to Night in the Woods. Let's move on. Night in the Woods is great. Y'all love it's Night not, in the Woods. I'm not sitting here telling you that it's the same developer. I know. It's, it's just, it's just a new game. Can, it's just oh a new God, game. It's not a spiritual successor. You're fucking killing me, Chris Davis. Stop I'm about to bitch slap all of y'all. These podcast, the last two weeks, these podcasts have started very positively. I'm like, I'm like really feeling it. And by the end of it, y'all have me wanting to fucking claw your eyes out with my fucking fingers. Do it. Put me out of my fucking misery, Nick. Just Chris go, Davis, Nick. A spiritual successor can be made by the same developer if it has the same look and feel, but tells a completely unrelated story. That is a yeah. spiritual successor. Absolutely. Definition. Moving on. Weird mm-hmm. Hilda Dyer. No. Nope. Grand nope. Blue Fantasy Ooh. Relink. Weird Winter 2023. Hilda- that game was revealed in 2017. Yes, and it looks like some Brad ass shit to me. Well, well, Platinum uh, Games yeah. was the lead on the combat for several years. Yes, kind of like near Automata. Listen, uh, did you guys know they're making a sixth? Did you guys know they're making a sixth Street Fighter? Oh, yes, why would they do that? And it's coming out in a couple weeks, and it looks like it's gonna be sick. Probably score a bunch of 95s, 96s. Who knows? 
Can't wait. All right, next up on the list, uh, Ultra. I, nobody really talked about this in our Discord much, but I, mm. I this is kind of a highlight for me. Ultros, which is a debut game from a studio uh, called Hadouk, uh, which is like a roguelite Metroidvania coming out in 2024. It looks like super psychedelic. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I was looking at this, and I remember there were rumors about Konami being having a big presence at, at this showcase, or you know, during the multiple showcases we have coming up, and that Castlevania being revived was like on the table. And I was like, is this some kind of like psychedelic new age like reimagining of Castlevania? Because if it is, I'm here for it. Of course, that's not what it is, uh, but it does look really cool. I do the- encourage you to. Could- Check it out. The lead artist behind it is the the lead artist from Hotline Miami. Yeah, that's another reason. Uh, to be it looks it sick, but like the gameplay, we don't we don't know. Yeah, much about I don't know it. what it is. Yeah. I don't know what to think about it, but I I just remember being like, "Ooh, this looks is this like a weird like reboot of Castlevania?" Because if it's so, I'm all, I'm on board. That's a weird. Thing. Um, they do have it listed know. under Metroidvania, so I mean. But it also it, they uh-huh. if you read the blog post about it, it is also a roguelite like it's it's loop based so Boom, it's not moving like on. Uh, Tower of Fantasy I don't know much about this. Boom, moving and on. Dragon's moving Dogma on. Two got its first gameplay reveal. Ooh, and I was somewhat disappointed. The good news is what it looks a hell of a lot like Dragon's Dogma, which yeah. is good because there's always a concern given how much time has passed. Like, what even is this? Is it just going to be like some new online thing? You know, which they. Granted, they did, and that was a failure, but I don't know. It it was comforting to see that it looked a hell of a lot like Dragon's Dogma. With that said, they didn't show much new, exciting gameplay. It just looked like Dragon's Dogma. Even a a lot of the moves and stuff they were showing just looked like stuff right out of the first game. Mm -hmm. I've seen some like really crazy, flashy Dragon's Dogma footage and trailers, and this just didn't have a lot going on. Like More than half of it was like story scenes and stuff, and that's not kind of what you want to see out of dragon's dogma they should like the the way to reveal dragon's dogma 2 is just to have dudes fighting big things big spells and stuff you know and this was just you we know some it of just it, wasn't a, a great trailer it just wasn't a great trailer to be honest you, you know what i will say that i having just played dragon's dogma for the revival club recently for the for the first time i didn't really yeah. feel it because a lot of that conversation back in the day and this was based on tech at the time right it was a lot of the conversations on our own podcast were about you know how dark the world was and how you could like i remember i always remember the story about like being like traveling through the woods with a lantern and like you could see like wolves kind of on the outside of like the yeah. light source or whatever and like nowadays like the contrast just isn't really there like when i was playing on pc like i was trying to kind of recreate that effect and i couldn't quite do it and i feel like this trailer kind of there were moments where i was like "Ooh, that looks like it like the darkness is really uh really thick you know what i mean and which i just i never got to really experience that it was it was, it was very little gameplay and there were a lot of quick cuts and you know yeah. i rewatched it and i'm like still, i'm like i'm like that move was in the first one that move was in the first one that move was you know did they have a spell like there's a part in the trailer see. Some new crazy classes some new crazy spells some new like even even like the things they were fighting seem very similar to the first game and right. normally i'd be fine with that and i am i am a, that is a game i want to play desperately but it's been like a decade and i expected to see something that was like crazy different looking i mean this is a new engine me... even, and it's like that even looked kind of like the jankiness of dragon's dogma how yeah. did they capture that 10 Honest years question. later in a brand new engine and it still looks like dragon's dogma Honest question, and I'm not trying to troll here. This might sound kind of like a trolly question, but like, even if this game turns out to be like what, like a sequel that fans really, really want, like this is a yeah, really good sure. Dragon's Dogma. It's still gonna be like a 75, right? No, <laughs> yeah, like sure. it's, fuck. You have no idea. Dude, what you're people about. are crazy, like no into Dragon's Dogma. About. Here's the thing: Dragon's Dogma really came out at a time when. When we this was a pre Monster Hunter World world. This was a pre you know Yakuza. This looks like it's going to be a pre Monster Hunter. Man, if... I'm saying Dragon's Dogma has a legacy, and people in the know knew that Dragon's Dogma was dope. And the critics at the time were like, I don't know what the fuck is this. Just like you, that was the reason you didn't play it back in the day because you're a stupid dummy really. head and you don't listen to the smart people. Stupid. But we knew. We I knew it was awesome. Podcast. And here's the thing. Time has been kind to Dragon's Dogma, and when the new one comes out, and it's going to be big and awesome and great, people are going to recognize that greatness, and it's going to score quite well. You know, 
b- oh, better yeah. than some dumb random indie game that you thought was going to be Castlevania, but is actually going to be a 69 on Metacritic Dude, like Storyteller. I mean, Don't trust any indies. Let's move on. Even if this game is the first game, but with better tech and large, like a larger world, it's a fucking 89, man. It's very. Oh my exciting. god! Next game, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's Help One and Two. Next this is, game. This is part. Of, this is the <sighs> PSVR two. No, block, no. By the way. He said that as a joke. Keep block, going. block, block. It is I'm just doing that. This is the VR block. Okay, this was like the yeah. important. Arizona oh, sunshine. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was the VR block. Let's go. Yes, because we, they talked about <laughs> VR games for like five games straight. Uh, All right, and we, like was this six. was this was the important moment. Of this okay, show hang on. for we, that hang on. product. Chris Davis, if we just read those titles and not say another word, can, can that be okay? Apart from one of them, yes. Five Nights, in, Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted 2, Resident Evil 4, Arizona Sunshine 2, Crossfire Sierra Squad. I know that's the one. No, uh, is it Synapse is the one you want to talk Synapse. about? Synapse, Synapse, Synapse is the next one. Looks pretty cool, but I mean, come on. What do you want to say? And then Beat Saber with the Queen All music. Right. Beat Saber? Is Beat Saber 2? The no, real the, just okay. Beat Saber Queen music pack. Just in general, and just in general, I just want to say, th- going into this showcase, this was the kind of the, the 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 block, quote unquote, that they needed to fucking deliver on, and they dropped they the did. fucking ball. Yes, yeah, no one's buying PSVR. Aside okay. from aside from obviously wanting to play Resident Evil Four in VR, which I will absolutely do, I'm not I really interested in, in any VR, of these actually, games on this thing. I know, but like the remake in VR. Of course, I want to play that in VR. Um, the I'm, not only... really, I'm not particularly interested in any of these. Um, and, and, and the fucking elephant in the room here is fucking no Astrobot. What the shit? Yeah. yeah like, the they need Astrobot. They, they closed all of Japan studio aside from, from the Astrobot people, and they don't even have a new Astrobot. I was this close wow, to okay. bidding on Astrobot before the announcement just so I can get it cheap because I was pretty confident it was going to be announced here. I'm really glad I didn't do that because <laughs> holy shit, weird. this is a disaster. Like, we can move on. All right. I, uh, no, I, oh, wait, no, no. He had his one game. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, I just wanted to mention I'm, I, Synapse is the only PSVR 2 title for which I want a PSVR 2. Um, but it's from the you're developers not buy one because as your it looks cool, but that's not a system advisor, seller. I, think I, 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 I agree with you. I just, <laughs> this is this is in dreams. They did Phantom Covert Ops, which was received, received really well. It's starring Jennifer Hale and David Hayter. David Hayter is the antagonist, and in this trailer, he seemed very menacing. I really like that. Um, but again, not a system seller. You should yes. not go spend five hundred dollars to play this. But the problem is, it's an exclusive to the PSVR two. It's not coming to PC, so like, just they really. I'm, I'm never going to get to play this, unfortunately. You can borrow mine. Fuck it. I don't care. I don't give a shit as long as you get it, give it back. Like, unlike Brad, unlike certain um, people, yeah. <laughs> um. Like they have games that I'm genuinely interested in, in development. Like we didn't hear anything about Behemoth. Which looks really, really cool. Um, there's Fuck that. Fuck you, uh, Brad. Fuck you. Oh my god, this troll is just holding up his demon souls copy. Um, and and you've got to think, Astrobot exists. Just they didn't show it. Fuck it's just it's a you. disaster. Okay. Uh, in an effort to wrap this segment up here, we have a couple more quick things. Project Q is real. This is the handheld remote play thing. They announced it. It's officially coming this winter. Uh, they didn't announce a price point. God damn that thing needs to be affordable it cannot be another like four hundred dollar peripheral especially considering it's not a console it is just a device used to re- play games remotely from your playstation 5 if it's that weird. thing is exp- if that thing is super expensive what the fuck are they doing uh they didn't learn that if that's if that's the case they learned nothing from the psvr situation no they haven't i guarantee you there's no way this is less than three hundred dollars because the technology is for exactly the same concept. The the Logitech, you know, Steam Deck esque thing is three fifty. Like but don't say Steam Deck esque. This is not Steam Deck. There's no hardware in this thing. Yeah, All it's doing But the, the Logitech device is exactly like this it is a cloud gaming system. There's no hardware in there to play games natively. And this right. is gonna be this is gonna be even worse in technology because it's just built for role play. There, and there's and you know there's going to be a Sony tax. Sony tax is going to be bad on this. All right. We've already spent too much time talking about this. 
they announced a new set of like wireless earbuds, which okay, that's cool, I guess. Weird. That'd be it's probably fifty dollars be because they can charge super that. expensive. But they they make good they make good headphones. It'll be. I'm not sure if it's you know whatever. How much was uh, that Sony tax tax in the PS4 era, huh? Chris Davis. I'm pretty certain it was a good Brad. fifteen to twenty percent. Last thing on the docket for this showcase. Of course, they closed the show out with Spider-Man 2. Oh, hang on. What? A... Oh, my God. What? You you did every game except for Marathon. Yes. Oh, f- oh that's I, true. You, you fucking. Sorry, <laughs> right, that's my fault. That's my fault because Sony decided to do this thing during like in the middle of the work week. Right. Somebody walked into my office while I was trying to watch this. Dude. And I had to like mute it. And I missed the Marathon thing completely. And I forgot to add it to the doc. So I don't literally even... put it in the notes. Honestly, it kind right of looks like the coolest game they showed. It looks pretty sick. It, it's it okay. is a fantastic art style, but it's also a PvP extraction shooter. Yeah, and, and those are bad. Those are bad, Chris Davis. We it's like not those? what I want from Bungie. But are those bad? Uh, I don't know about that, man. No, but every, everyone says they're bad or something. Like the only I people who know what they are say they're bad and are sad and mad. I, and the only people who know what they are are people who play them, right? Like, like I Tarkov, do keep hearing. Tarkov, it's like Tarkov. It's like I, Tarkov, I do keep Tarkov, hearing Tarkov, 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 people Tarkov. talking about like a <laughs> extraction shooter bubble. But like, what? Yeah. Uh, what is actually out there? I don't know. I don't know. It looks cool. It's Bungie's first non-Destiny project in like nine years. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. it looks sick. That's it's a big deal. It's a it's a reboot of like their original big shooter franchise, their pre Halo mm-hmm. shooter franchise, mm-hmm. Marathon for Apple computers. And again, it looks sick. It looks really cool. I uh, don't know, man. This Bungie is still like the best gunplay I can think of ever. It's a very so stylish. Like, them making a new shooter game is fucking sick. Is awesome. Sorry, I did not mean to overlook that one. That was my bad. Also, uh, Sony really is cool. Sony is sticking to their agreement you're, with Bungie, you're and this jerk, is a Nick. this is a fully multi platform title, by the way. Which is weird because Bungie has officially been. I mean, I guess it's well, they made it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this the, Bungie's been acquired by Sony, but this predates that, obviously. So it's still multi platform. Um, all right. The, now the last thing they that they talked about was Spider Man Two. Uh, we got like a ten minute. Uh, demonstration of this, and we now have some additional details about it. Um, they confirmed. The de- they confirmed. Okay, Brad, I do not want to get on a tangent about New York City again. So please, let's not do that. The New York City. Uh, the New York City. The New York City. The New York City. New York City. Um, but we got some some interesting details here. They confirmed the day before the showcase, just randomly on Twitter, that no co op, which honestly makes me happy because. I know. Yeah. Aside, dude, aside from like, say what you laugh about it if you want. I know it's predictable Nick comment, I suppose. But like, look what happened. Gotham Knights did not get received well. I, the last thing no, I want to see. Was a bad developer, but yeah. I know. But like, the last thing I want to see, like any, like, it is a toss up. Whenever a a predominantly single player story driven game tries to insert co op or something, it is a fifty fifty shot as to whether it's going to completely fuck the experience or be totally worthwhile. So I'm kind of glad they didn't even risk it. Um. So we now uh, we got our first look at the at Spider-Man in the symbiote suit. Um, we got Which a good I'm look at Kraven. I'm kind of curious. You know, this is like a cool, fresh story. What? What? It's like he's becoming aggressive or something. Dude, Weird. I, I think it's the trying. suit doing it. Though. I can kick him. You from know, the is it like? Where is this going? Is go? it like alive? Dude, Brad, I know, I know. God, Brad has the unique ability to take something that I am so genuinely excited and thrilled I, about. Look, it's I, completely. I like I'm excited too. I think the game is going to be quite good, Nick. I'm sorry. I know, I know you do. I know you do. Vin but I, I mean, I do agree. I mean, this this does this is also part of what I started what I what I said at the very beginning of this conversation about the, the showcase and that it um, didn't really show us anything that we didn't already know. It just yeah. confirmed. You know, we knew the symbiote was going to be part of this game. I wasn't really expecting them to sh- come right out of the gate with him with Spider-Man actually wearing the symbiote suit, I thought it was going to be more like focused on Venom as the antagonist, which is obviously going to be a part of this game. Um, we don't really know who's going to in- ultimately end up wearing the Venom suit. It's probably going to be Harry Osborn or maybe Norman Osborn. Who the fuck knows? Um, but the demo heavily oh. featured. Huh? Why? Do you want me to get into that? 
<laughs> yeah, kind of. I mean, if you the, in the, the, in the end of the is there something movie? from from Miles Morales? Because I didn't play that one. No, no, it's, no, it's something the from the first. Of Spider-Man the very end of the first game was Spider-Man Harry yeah. Osborn in like a back in like a tank being healed, and he was covered in the symbiote suit. So like the symbiote has something to do with trying to Wait, heal. Really? Yeah, God, I forgot thing. about that. It was, it was a like a post credits thing. thing. Yeah. Oh, um. Wow. So you know, honestly, if it, what I can see them doing here, because Craven's a huge part of this game. Um, and they showed Lizard in this demo, which I thought, or in this demonstration, which I thought was unexpected. Um, and they featured the symbiote suit. We never got, we never got to see Venom himself. My guess is that like Venom is going to kind of fill the same role as like Doctor Octopus, where it's like at the very end of the game, they're going to like insert like a like you're going to left turn. You know what I mean? Like all of a sudden, there's a new villain towards the very end, and that's who you're, like where the story kind of shifts its focus to. Also, Green Goblin. Who the fuck knows? Because Harry Osborn is obviously a huge part. I mean, that's game. that's way more exciting than Venom. I mean, you're right. I mean, I honestly, I honestly Craven. hope. Dude, or Craven for sure. I I honestly I think Craven is is a really cool inspired choice. To be totally He's honest, pretty cool. It's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. I, um, I look at that. But I don't know. The, the demo did show oh. switching between Peter and Miles. I don't know how much freedom you have to do that, or if it's just like at certain key moments. I have a feeling it's probably just during key moments or hmm. after certain I don't missions know. you can swap between them. We live in a know. post GTA Five world. <laughs> You're right. So, You're right. The, the structure of the original game was that story missions progress the time of day and uh, activities you can do. I I think that they'll use those pivotal moments in the, pro- the player's progress to switch between characters. I don't think it's going to be just a press a button to switch between. Well, there is a moment in this demo where you see a prompt. Yeah, yeah that, that's within a mission. It was obviously know, like a I story. Be, yeah. I, I, I do think like in between missions, I wouldn't be surprised if like when you're not doing a main story mission, if you can just switch back and forth between them to explore the world. We'll see. Yeah. Especially uh, if they're um, going to have different power sets, which it's going to be a good fun yeah. video game and everybody's going to be happy and it'll get Carlos 17 points and we'll move on with our lives. Fucking bastard. <laughs> um, point is, I mean, it was, it was a cool note to end on. I'm obviously very excited for it, but again, Dude. We did. We didn't really know it. Did it wasn't the thing. Like it wasn't like a big surprise. We knew it was coming. We knew this reveal was coming. They didn't commit to a date, which I thought was interesting. They just said fall. Um, and I think rumors have been leading people to believe September. Word on the street is September. <laughs> um, people are saying it is weird. There's no September. date. That's super weird. You is know what it I because think it is, the next Spider Man the- movie comes out in like a week. No, you know what I think it is? I think they're waiting to kind of see where everybody else falls so that they they can strategically position their game, right? Because mm-hmm. we're we're about to have the 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 uh the Xbox showcase. I'm sure Nintendo will do something. Like they're like they're probably just waiting to be like we can probably this release is it at any point. Yeah. Game for the fall though. It's got to hit this no, year. No, I think right? I, yeah. I, they're going to be very Microsoft-y. No, no, no. I think I think I think you're right though, Nick. I think they might be like trying to get out of like Armored Core 6's way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we all know that's gonna be a fucking blow up that's gonna be amazing yeah totally gonna it's dominate nice the whole sure. cycle all right uh before we before we cut to break because um that was a lot should, should, yeah my god i i i, I, I do okay. want and we gave it the i don't time want this con- I, I don't want this conversation to be huge but it came up in Discord, Brad, and I, I do want to pose the question here on the podcast. I save it for my four-player minute if you want. Think about how to make it a little more succinct. We do need Player to move on. I mean, but, I mean, that means that you're pretty much... I guess... We, okay, we could do that if you, you know want. What I'm I feel like if we bring it up now, we'll just be, like, talking a lot about it. All right, maybe we should save it for the end, and then if, if we have some time at the end, we'll do it, or you yeah. can just do it in your four-player minute. Okay. Yeah. For, for, for the sake of time, we will revisit the indie review score conversation at the end of the second segment or in Brad's four player minute. It will happen. So we are going to take a break. When we come back, of course, we have more Zelda to talk about. We've got Planet of Lana, Humanity, and the four player minute. So if you're watching us live, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
No, I, I was just trying to think about um, Fantasy League. No, I, I'm, I'm dead serious. I think it. I think it is time for everyone to start dumping their big hits. Like, like I think we all need to be racing to the bottom at this point. No. You know what I was thinking? You first. You want, you want, you want, you want me to get okay. crazy? What I'm if saying, we, we're playing the long game. Play what if we game. do a side competition? You know how I was thinking we should do like a big This is the podcast, show? by the way. We should do yeah. a prediction show or whatever. Mm. About Summer of Keeley or whatever. Um, what if like the winner gets a super drop? I suggest you know, that like, last like week. really like or or like um we start betting like side bets where you can earn like more cash, you know, like like well, I don't know. Introduce I, some, I, I some feel like anything we introduce, there. Nolan's gonna veto because he's got a pretty strong list, you know, and probably doesn't want us fucking with that. But even even if we don't do cool. that. Even if we don't do that, I want everybody here to be thinking about those kinds of things that we can just be ready for at the beginning of next year. Saying like, "Yeah, this is the, it, these are the it, these are the new wrinkles we're introducing." We can do that yeah. stuff for next year. If we plan it ahead of time, we we could do that stuff for next, next year. Is gonna be brutal. It's yeah. gonna be fucking brutal. All right, welcome back to the show, everybody. Uh, it's time to talk about the video games that we are playing, um, and I am gonna start real quick. With a game that I'm not going to talk very long about, so I want to just go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm not talking about Planet of Alon. No, no. we're gonna, we're going to save Zelda for last because obviously we have the most to say <laughs> about Zelda. I know people are like, damn it, just talk about Zelda. Um, but I, I do want to talk about Planet of Lana. I finished that game about 20 minutes before How we sat down to record this podcast. It's about four and a half hours. It's it's a pretty short video game. Um. Obviously, this is uh, we talked about this a little bit during the uh, Steam Next Fest. Uh, it had actually had very positive uh, reception during Steam Next Fest, myself included. Yeah. Um, and you know, this was a game that Nolan picked up, uh, and you know, it's just had a lot of positive, uh, a lot of positive vibes. It's it it scored an eighty one. You know, it's. It's oh, that so very it's Miyazaki. Indie game. I got it. Yeah, it's an indie game. Uh, it's that Miyazaki looking, like kind of hand painted uh, visual style. It's it's a side scrolling platformer kind of thing. Um, wasn't really sure what to expect from this game because the demo is it, it's a pretty chill, like cozy game. You know, which is great uh, when you're when you're looking for that kind of experience. But it's also kind of going for the same thing that like. Uh, I don't know, like Limbo or Inside might be going for, right? Um, Which is why I don't understand what you mean when you said you don't know what to expect from this game, because I feel like the first second of footage I saw of this game, I knew exactly what to expect from this well, game. Well, no, 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 I mean, I guess what I'm I guess the, the best way to put this would be, I think the demo did a nice job of, like, setting up kind of the very, like, I it's not the baseline... <laughs> mechanics right so it's it's a it is like super strict in terms of being a side scroller right it doesn't it, it doesn't do a lot with like foreground background like as far as interaction right you don't interact or venture off that path you're going forward or you're going backwards and like the puzzles they did they introduced in the demo were very much based around you you're playing this little boy you have this like cat friend and you are trying to uh, navigate this alien world, or it's not t not alien to him. I suppose you live on this planet, but you—it's been invaded by the, this these alien. What the hell was that? That was weird. The the planet has been invaded by these alien, these like robotic alien creatures, and they have kid. They have like swooped into your village and like kidnapped everybody in your village, right? And you have a sister. I'm presuming it's your sister. It's one of the. It's kind of like eco in that like everyone that talks, you don't. They don't really speak. They speak similar. Sure, yeah. So like, you don't really know, there's no like s understandable spoken word in this game, right? So you're kind of just picking up on context clues. So uh, these aliens swoop in, they kidnap wh wh someone who I presume is your sister, and you are venturing across this land to try and make it to like kind of like their mothership to like hopefully get her back. And the puzzles in this game are built around like encountering these like robot robotic aliens in these kind of like... 2D spaces and trying to get past them. Now, you might say the demo does a good job of kind of 
give, telling you what to expect from it, but I also expected it to keep like getting more and more complex as the game went, and maybe even eventually introducing like new like mechanics to make it more bombastic. But I feel like it the whole game kind of stays very steady. Like the puzzles you're doing at the very end of this game are actually very similar to the puzzles you're doing at the very beginning of this game. There doesn't seem to be like this really obvious like upward trajectory of complexity in its design. Which was kind of disappointing. I'm gonna be honest. And I streamed this the other night. And I, I think the sentiment while I was streaming was like, oh, this is pretty, it looks fun, it's cozy, like, I, I like the vibe. Like, I, I can't point to any one thing about this game and say, I don't recommend it because this was done poorly. Nothing about this game is done poorly. It's just... It's just not very... When it's all said and done, I don't think it's going to ultimately end up being very memorable. Because I think other games have come along and do th done this this kind of thing better. In fact, I was thinking about last year's Somerville, which I don't not did anybody else besides me play that? Was Chris, yeah, Chris it was, ended up on my game of the year list. Which oh, one was that's that? right. The 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 other alien invasion game. Uh, guess number nine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't remember where it was on this list. But, I mean I thought about putting it at my number nine. <laughs> Brad. <laughs> yeah, uh, fucking Newark. I f fucking Brad in here calling me out for some reason picking my number nines. Not my number tens. He's always He's like, he has some vendetta against my number nine specifically. Um, but here's the thing, like towards like the like last like chunk of, of Somerville, they kind of flip every, like they kind of like give you this crazy mechanic that like changes the way you look at the world and like the way you interact with puzzles. Mm -hmm. And then they do this like crazy, like you know how the inside ends with this like really over the top, like bombastic shit that makes you go, what the fuck? Like Somerville it may not be as successful as inside in doing that, but it goes for it. It tries to do something really crazy at the end. Well, you're talking um, Somerville. Somerville does. And I was oh. expecting, especially once I was like halfway through planet of Lana, I was like kind of expecting that game to do, or this game to do something like that, but it never does. It just kind of, it's just this, this very, it's this very like even game all the way through. It's very similar from the start as it is to the end. And it doesn't ever really shoot mean, for the like, stars. But like, but Nick, the whole meme was that like this is a sleepy, you know, old lady game or whatever. And man, you are not you were just not, confirming my fears. I mean, I'm not first of all, I wouldn't use those words to describe it. I I, I uh <laughs> I mean, th I I recommend this game and I think the reviews are pretty uh They're accurate. Good. I mean, it's good. It's it like I said, like I recommend I would I would recommend this game if you're looking for like a, kind of like a cozy feel good like they get because the puzzle the puzzles can get tricky and they can be interesting but like it, it it just doesn't ever like take off which is really kind of a shame there's like one like if you look at the trailers this is like one really like really exciting looking sequence and I kept waiting for it to happen and thinking there was like there's gonna be more of those kinds of moments and when it finally did happen it was really cool and really great and then that was kind of it that was kind of like the most exciting part of the game. And I would that ended up being kind of a bummer, even though that moment was actually pretty fucking cool. Um, I don't know. I, I don't mean to, I don't <laughs> I don't want to bum anybody out who's thinking about playing this because I, I do recommend it. Uh, but I also would I, I, I would totally understand if maybe you were like, hey, I'll wait for this to be on sale. Because... Nick, in 81, yeah. I want you That's... to tell me why this game is seven points better than Atomic Heart. That is fucking crazy to me. That is fucking crazy to me. I'm sorry. Uh, seven points? Is that, does that make it seven? I guess. Oh yeah, I guess you're right. If it's at 73. Um, I don't know. I mean, that does seem pretty fucking wild to me. Because this game, while very competent, doesn't shoot for the stars. It has a really nice look to it. It just does not. Tell me it, why it's nine points better than Days Gone. It sounds like you want to have the conversation that we were talking about that you said you wanted to save for your four player. No, minute. no, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just... All right, then maybe circle back around to that when we get to your four player minute. Look, Planet of Lana is a pretty good video game. Yeah, but it's also I don't think it's anything particularly special. It which just is kind looks of like it just looks like, um, you know, like if I wanted to go into a self-induced coma maybe I, no, i'm just kidding. i'm just kidding it looks it looks nice 
And and that's what it is. Yeah. It's nice as hell. It's nice. It as looks hell. like rhyme. No, dude. I, I think you're having a hard time remembering what rhyme actually was because that yeah, was like an right. actual like third person open like world like open no, world exploration game. Yeah. Um, so rhyme's cooler than this. I, I'm honestly, I'd probably. I think. I mean, I played rhyme, and I I, fu- I fully admit I don't remember how I felt about rhyme. <laughs> um. But I have a feeling I'll be like I'll be like in the same exact. Well, I don't think I'll be the, in the same exact spot with Planet of Lana in a year because. So what you're saying is, is Planet of Lana is going to be everyone's sixteenth favorite game of the year. Sure, I think that's accurate. I think that's accurate. Yeah. Like I'm like I'm I'm thinking like I, I I kept having thoughts about Somerville because I actually I really enjoyed a lot of the stuff Somerville did in this game, but I did not expect to end up liking Somerville more than this, and I think I do. Oh man. So, you know what games were stunningly good? What Limbo and Inside? Mm. Yes, maybe, yes. Maybe just let them them. Or they're not even a studio anymore, right? We get like you know. I mean, there is some clever shit in this game. Like there's like some of the the ways that kind of like it's. I mean, every puzzle is like, how do I get past these robots? And then it's like the screen the screen shifts to you, the to the next thing. Really, and it's like, you, how do I get past this robot? Nick, you and know some of it's is? really interesting. You know what, what? this is. <laughs> What, what, what? This is a game that you've played in a post-Jedi Survivor world. It is. And everything no, it seems is. a little bit not as good. A little bit can worse. I just say, can I just say, since you brought it, since you brought it up, uh, I did finish Jedi Survivor in the past week, and holy fuck, that game is good. God. Really? Damn, I was, yeah. sad. I was sad when it was over. Holy Speaking shit. Speaking of good, let's the talk about the other new game. Yeah, let's talk about it. The Legend of Zelda? Not, not yet. Almost. Humanity. Oh. Almost. Uh, humanity. I'm... Huge manatee. <laughs> While humanity is a word in the English language, it also sounds like a really good like like B mo- horror movie, like half human, half manatee. Humanity. But I guess it's just a word. Humanity. So this, this is this is the new <laughs> um puzzle game from Enhance. Um, you know, Enhance. They're the the company what made you know like Tetris Effect and and Res and stuff. I mean, it, it's Mizuguchi Studio. This was like a collab with like some fucking like artist or whatever. Um, I mean, you gotta uh, admit it's a weird looking game. <laughs> it's a crazy looking game. I I feel like the visual style of this game is what makes it one a perfect fit for Enhance and two you know, is, I mean, honestly, like, so it's a really cool puzzle game. Um, and it does get really complex and really challenging, but what do you do in the, 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 the potent, the potent, the potency of the visual effect never goes away. It's just a really cool game to, to look at because like the endless stream of, of, the people just looks really, really cool, especially when you're doing puzzles that are like flinging them all, all over the map, or you know, Change just them falling to their deaths off off the the level just look really cool. So it's it's a puzzle game. People call it like Lemmings or whatever, but yeah, like I mean, 3D Lemmings, Lemmings is or an old is an old 2D game, and I don't think 3D Lemmings was really anything anyone cared about. But it is a game where you're leading um, a endless flow of people to various goals. And uh, it's just a really is it a dog or a cat? It's a Shiba puzzle game. Oh, it's a Shiba Inu. Yeah, you play as a a Shiba Inu made of light or something, and he he barks commands for for the people to follow. And you're trying to get the endless flow of people to the goal. Is this endless flow of people just trying to get to you so they can pet you? No, 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 no. They're they're just going forward and you're giving them all kinds of commands i mean you start off the game of just like being able to to control their direction and as you get further and further into the game you get all kinds of new commands um and new types of like level obstacles this is a very simple puzzle premise that gets like ridiculously complex as the game goes along um like i'm just kind of showing off some random levels here and and they're mostly levels that i've done because honestly I tried to record footage with a level that I have not done before. And, and it was terrible. You know, it, can, it can be very challenging, right? Um, and shit can go pretty you say, bad. You say the footage was bad. 
Did I say that? No, you didn't. I'm saying you can say it. The footage was bad. When you tried to do a puzzle you had never done on the pod on the feed or well, for the because, recording, because it I, was not I, good I, I feel like when you're trying to show off a puzzle game, you don't just want to show off one level, one part of one level over and over again, right? You want to show mm-hmm. a little variety so it doesn't make sense. Um and I was on like a boss stage, so it was like hard because there's like bosses in the game, boss stages in the game. There's a lot of like levels and a lot of cool ideas. And and like I said, like the visual like style of this game never stops being rad. <laughs> and I'm not saying it's leaning on it because, you know, visual style aside, it's still like a really solid, com- tricky like puzzle game. But um it's got like the look and the sound of what you'd expect out of, you know, like enhance, which is like fucking cool. Right. <laughs> you know, if, if planet of Lana was like the boring old lady game, this is like the cool kid game, Nick. So I was trying to get you to try humanity because it has PSVR two support and knowing what I know about VR and no, and having played this game, this would be a sick fucking thing to see. In it movie. just it just drives Brad crazy that I have but, the PSVR two and I'm but but I I'm not playing the games that he wants me to play on it or anything I mean, on your PSVR two, which is fine. I get it. It's VR. People buy VRs and never fucking play them. But but like that is how it works, this, yeah. this is on PS Plus, and you have a P, you have one of the three v, PSVR twos that got sold to people. I thought yeah, maybe I you'd do. try it. No, I mean, I I just wanted you to try a cool puzzle game. You like puzzle games. I do. And I did say I was going to try this. I just didn't know you meant by Thursday. (laughs) Well, we're not going to talk You put this on the dock today. This is is a one podcast game, right? Um, But man, it's it's got it. I will say they do like this very minimal, like kind of electronic thing. I don't know, with the music and you spend a long time on these stages and like, there's a very subtle like build up, you know, to the, to the music a little bit, but it's like really subtle. So when you're like stuck on a, on a stage for like half an hour, it's like, all right, I want, I want some new music and you can change the tracks like before a, a, a stage starts, but like, I don't have the ability to change the tracks during the stage. And it's weird. Cause you unlock a lot of functionality through by getting the goldies and i will say while the puzzle design is like very tricky um it doesn't become like truly difficult until you're trying to get the goldies which are these you see like these golden kind of statues that you trying to take that once the people walk over them or jump you know to where they are like it it becomes it goes along with the crowd right but the problem Mm -hmm. is um you can't while you know an endless amount of people can just fall off the edge of the stage while you're trying to figure things out and direct the flow of people the goldies are sort of like a one shot thing right so if you fuck up the puzzle and they fall off the edge of the map you can no longer get the goldies in that stage so the trick is all i mean the the challenge is to figure out how to get these gold statues in one without fucking up the puzzle right it adds so you, sort of, you almost have to figure out the puzzle before you can start to figure out how you get those goldies so now it's like okay i know how to get to the end how do i get these guys without fucking that up and that's right. where the game gets truly insidious and like if I, I i don't know if y'all know enough about this game to kind of follow along what i'm doing in this puzzle but like in my mind, everything is going like perfect, and then everything goes horribly fucking wrong. Because yeah. it, it, what I, what I so I, I have the like goldies Canadian up on this general. platform, and now I'm going to adjust the flow of people to start pushing this platform across the stage, so I can get the people and the goldies to the end of the stage. And you, it, it's it seems like it's working out at first, and then I'm like, okay the people are, they're going to start moving this platform. And I'm like, I got it. I got this stage. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait, wait, why is this going in the other direction? And I realized there's like a massive horde of people just were like gathered and started pushing it from another direction. It gets really tricky. And it's, it's just, it's just a cool puzzle game with cool style. Here you go. Here's the tragedy. Uh, yeah. Here's the, here's like, the tragedy. Like, I, I, I just got to get this across. Like th- this puzzle stage is called the fairy. And I'm like, Oh, I get it. I'm basically creating a fairy and now I'm going to get these dudes across. And I'm like, oh, wait. There's I mean, this looks like it's there. going really well. <laughs> oh, just wait. I'm like, no, wait a minute. <laughs> no, <laughs> What's happening here? No. And just everything goes wrong. Um, but it's <laughs> cool. It's challenging. 
it's got, got a lot of style. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, this is fantastic. Just, everything went horrible. Everything went horrible. Um, <laughs> everyone's dying. The puzzle's ruined, but it looks cool <laughs> and it sounds cool. Um, and I like it a lot. And maybe it's not PS Plus. It might. It might be like the PS. Um, like the next tier. It's not the most expensive tier, but I, there there is a version of your Sony sub where you get this game for free. And I encourage everyone to try it out because it's just, it's, I don't know. It's a very likable thing. Um, and you know, Henry loves watching it and I tried to get, he's, he's been watching me play it in this motherfucker, dude. He's like, no, 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 do this. No, turn here, turn this, move, move the block. He's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And today when I was recording, which is like, fine, but how about you play? We're going to record footage of you playing and I'm going to, I'm going to talk shit on the podcast of like you playing the game because all you do is sit there and talk shit about me playing. And then he and started that's not playing. what happened. He was really bad at it and he didn't know how to control the camera. And I was like, all right, I can't show this footage. This is awful. Um, <laughs> but then I, I took him back to the see first, this. <laughs> I took him back to the first stage and he did kind of start figuring it out a little bit, um, which is cool. I, I, don't know. I, I didn't think he'd have the, you know, capacity for, Com- complex puzzle games but i mean he's getting there he's it's kind of neat um so yeah be, every time you tell a story about every time you tell a story about henry and then you like you you say stuff like and then he said this i'm like i know this is just me being kind of like removed from the situation i don't see this child every day so i don't see him growing and becoming more of a human being but like every time you talk about him saying stuff i'm like damn he can say that stuff like he can speak those words already i thought he was a baby <laughs> Griffin but he's yeah, i he know knows. like in my mind in, in my mind he might i mean he might as well be a baby <laughs> it's just weird uh, it's just weird it's, yeah. like, it's like all of a sudden you see him for the first time in years and you're like holy shit he's like talking and having complex thought already this is bizarre maybe i'll do a little uh streaming with uh with with uh uh, uh henry uh, maybe this he, is for, a good he forgot his name. Name your own child. <laughs> he forgot his name. <laughs> oh my god! First born but, son but this, forgot his name. Here, here, cool. Here's the, the terrible re- secret about really Brad cool is VR, that he dude, went out for cigarettes like years ago. He's out in a motel. He's casting for a motel or somewhere. He didn't even know who his child is. He couldn't pick him up from a, a, a picture. Pick lineup. him out of a lineup. Oh one last god. thing I'll say about this: there's like a ton of unlockables. So when you're getting these like goldies and stages. It's unlocking like a ton of shit. Not not just like cool features, like like or like basic features. Like you'll get the ability to fast forward, you'll get the ability to pause and stuff, and like change the music track. But you're you also start unlocking like all kinds of like visual effects for like the like, actual like flow of people, and it gets like pretty crazy. Some of you can turn them all into unlock. aliens or something. <laughs> like like even more abstract stuff than that. But uh, yeah like there's like you know big head mode i think is the most recent unlocked right now i have like 70s people on or something yeah um but it, it, it's just it's a it's a cool uh it's just a cool vibey puzzle game that's just really you know tricky and cool and you know like people are being so stupidly reductive when they say it's like lemmings first of all lemmings was good like lemmings was a cool game it's also yeah. like an early 90s game so like calling this an or is like calling this lemmings is fucking absurd because that's such an old game but i think it's just i think it's i mean obviously i know what they're going for i know what they're going for they're just trying to paint a word picture that people can like like if you're trying to tell people what this is it's kind of hard to explain so saying painting like lemons lemmings as like a starting point i think makes sense just to to get people to understand what the what the hell it is, but beyond that, it's way it does seem like it's way more complex. So I, I can guarantee uh, you, like five people listening or watching this right now, even know what Lemmings is, and that's including yeah. who's talking. I was surprised. That, I was surprised that Nick knew what Lemmings was. I loved so. Lemmings. Fuck you. Really? I'm not that, I'm, yeah, I played but Lemmings. It's old. <laughs> it's yeah, old. it is old. It is fucking old. But I, I I did play quite a bit of Lemmings back in the day. All right. Um, it's time. I know Crispy's been waiting with bated breath. Um, we all have. It, the time has come to talk about The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, I don't know where we stand from last week. I'm sure y'all have played hundreds of hours of it at this point or something. I Here, don't know. Here's the thing, is that this game, I think something is wrong with my Switch. Because there's no way that I have put this much amount of time into this game in 12 days. 13 days. 
because it says my switch it says i played over 95 hours that's impossible that's that means impossible. i would have to play the game for eight hours a day every single day straight that's insane no that, that couldn't be true wait how many hours it says 95. last when i checked yesterday over 95 for 10 days I mean, let's be honest, the Nintendo Switch hour counter thing is not the most accurate. It can't be. It, that, that there's can't no be. fucking way. Do you have but, a job? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I have a job. Uh, he just hasn't slept in two weeks. All right. No, I, I think um, it's just fucked up. But like, it, it, it says I have put more time into Tears of the Kingdom than I put into Breath of the Wild. That is odd. Okay. Well, uh, so, that is weird. So let me start... I, I'm not going to have a ton to contribute to this conversation this week. Um, so let me just start by saying this, because I, 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 I said this on the pot on the, uh, the, my stream the other night talking to chat. And I, I was, th- I've been thinking about it a lot and I realized I'm experiencing something very strange <laughs> with tears of the king. Brad refers to it as my, he says, says you, you accuse me of being like anti hype or something about Zelda. Yeah. And that's not the case here. It, it, I think it stems from the fact that I ended up, basically putting Zelda down so I could plow through the end of Jedi Survivor and ended up playing Jedi Survivor. I've played more Jedi Survivor in the past since I got back from my trip than Zelda. I mean, it's a good um, game. It is a fantastic game. But here's what, I th- here's what I think is happening, right? Because Tears of the Kingdom has, in every sense of the word, lived up to my expectation, right? It is, it is an incredible fucking game. There's no doubt about it. Well, I, but in I ways think you don't I, even realize yet. In ways I mean, that I truly. don't even realize yet, right? Like yeah, I haven't that's, even. That's I haven't the even rub got, is that you, you I, don't even know half the half of it. Yeah, I haven't yet. I have not yet made a working vehicle, right? You know what I mean? Like I haven't oh, done any of the man. cool shit yet, right? Oh, I have done a dungeon. I have done a dungeon, so that's something. Um, but what? But what? Which what one? I think I, I did the uh, the wind temple. Everyone does that one first, huh? Yeah, they somehow was, like subtly I, kind dude, of like suggest. I you do don't that. know how I, I don't know how that happened either because like I started in Zora Domain and was doing that quest line and then just left and went and did the wind <laughs> temple. Like yeah. I don't know, like you know, I'm beginning like, to think the game tricked me. Like no, like, it hypnotized me. Like like I was talking about last week, the game wants you to go in that direction. It programs several of the main quests to start you going know, moving in that direction. No, this you know what different. it's like. It's like uh, it's like uh, at Disney World they have that be my guest restaurant where they send you into the ballroom to eat with no like tracking device or anything and they're like and you're like how are you gonna find me and then they just show up with your food and they're like and you're oh, like find you yeah it's like how the fuck did they do that it's like the game I just want to subtly remind game. you they they yeah. are watching at all times exactly like it just it, it's like they, it's like he's not doing the wind temple yet we'll just slowly guide him no, um it's crazy. Can't be. Like, i mean it's like, i mean obviously that's not but but, but let me finish this thought here real quick because I, I i do think it's kind of strange right because it's lived up to my expectation in every sense of the word without even doing any of the crazy shit right it's amazing <laughs> um but I, I i feel i don't feel as enthusiastic about picking it up and playing as I thought I would. And I think it's because I just finished playing. I just played Jedi survivor, which is a game that I had the lowest of lowest expect. Like I had no, I didn't even know if I wanted to play that fucking game. And, and then it just kind of blew past my expectations in like the biggest way possible. And now I'm playing a game that has basically just matched my expectations. So I don't know. Have you played? About fourteen, fifteen hours, like, I think. Yeah. That's I, that, that, being... I think that's what it is. But like, yeah. but like, but like, I'm thinking about like when Breath of the Wild came out, I couldn't put it down. I played through Planet of Lana instead of playing this. I should have been playing this, and I played through Planet of Lana. I I spent four and a half, five hours on Planet of Lana that could have been dedicated to Zelda, and I've already spent about twenty something hours on Jedi Survivor Nick. that I could have spent on this. <laughs> Is it? How much, have you been on. down in the depths much, Nick? Not, I mean, I, I, a couple times, and I've been meaning to go back. But you, I mean, I'm, a, I'm in a situation right now where I've somehow burnt through all my bow and all my bows, and I now I can't seem to find anybody with a fucking bow and arrow. So I don't want to go into the depths without a bow, and that's where yeah. I'm at right now. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to put that out there because I thought it was very weird. And I've never really experienced this because I feel like I should be. I, I feel like I should be. Oh my I god! Think, that that horse swimming. Yes, I think, I think you've uh, it off the edge. This, this I don't know, Nick. I think you've like emotionally exhausted yourself on the hype. 
I mean, I do think I do think part of it is what I mentioned last week about the fact that every Zelda is. is I, I, this is a situation where I'm never playing that a Zelda hyped for this game. Though. No, that, I do. Remember? I fucking was. I was fucking hyped for this you game. You were like the one dissenting opinion. I'm when, not being when, dissenting though. No, I'm what saying you, like even before release, you were you. When I posed the question, like it's this is it's impossible for this to not be amazing, and you were like, "Well, I don't know." Like you were the one, like it was just I was being a devil's advocate, Brad. What I I was, think you were. I think deep down you were like, "Eh." "Brad, there is no world. There is no world in which the Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom is not my number two or number one game of this year." Number two or number one. I don't know why that sounds you so know funny. Jedi's gonna be your number one. This game is the you second best game I played one. this year. Okay, um. but what I said last week still stands. There is something magical about a new Zelda game coming out and kind of seeing how they've reinvented Zelda again, right? I don't yeah. I don't have that here because it feels like I'm just playing more Breath of the Wild with Whoa. a bunch of really cool shit on top. I, no, I, with a, I think with a bunch great. of really Okay. You know what I'm talking about, right? They've re like oh my god. I, I don't now I'm getting worked yeah, out. Yeah, no, 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 no. We said that last week too. Oh, no, it is it is Breath of the Wild, but with like two or three other games worth of systems dropped. There on are top only of it. A, there are only a handful of Zelda games that have ever come out that have felt f- familiar, and none have felt familiar like this has felt familiar because I've spent I've played this game for like 15 hours, right? Is what I said, and I've spent about 95 percent of that running around the same world that I ran around in, the, in Breath of the Wild, oh, which see, is fine. That, that's, but, I but haven't see, even been back up so into the crazy clouds is, again yet. Is, what, so what are you doing? You, like, maybe you're just playing it bad. You're because, just like, wrong, like right? finding those towers and like start doing this stuff up in the sky and like going down. I what was doing this stuff call? down in the depths last time I was there, and I'm like, this is insane. Dude, no, this, it this is, is insane. This is more insane than anything I've done in a Zelda game. I do think you're. I do. I do think you're blowing what I'm trying to say out of proportion. Because again, I tried to state this when I started by saying, this game is everything I wanted it to be and more. I think this is an amazing video game. There is no denying that. I just. I I don't know how I've managed to pull myself away from it to play through Planet of Lana or play twenty and more hours of Jedi because Survivor you're on a podcast and because you have a stream and because you you're want all to do on a something podcast. I, I think so. No, you're right. And I I've, I've been playing Darkest Dungeon and talked about that. And I've been playing Humanity and talked about that. Look, th- that's just the we trained ourselves to do this. Look, for look, look, look. Literal look. decades now. And Nick, all I want to say is the conversation you're having and trying to have feels like a like a post-mortem conversation like like it, it's the one we have at the end of the year it's the one we have when we finish the game it sure. feels too soon for you right now honestly sure and i'm not tr- I, i'm not trying to say it's a ra- bad take i'm just saying it's too early to have that take i think but it's not even a take i think i'm going to even have when it's all said and done right then- um so the thing that i did the thing that i have done since last week like I said, I went and did a dungeon because that was one of my biggest lingering questions about this game. And I finally, I was like, okay, I have the ability now to go do what I assume is a dungeon ass dungeon, right? Has everybody here done that that first dungeon? Mm-hmm. At least you're talking I've about done the two wind, of them. The the wind dungeon, right? right? I have not done the wind dungeon. So I've what done. we can, what, so what I what I what I can say, I guess, is that uh, I did that first dungeon, and I feel a lot better about the dungeon situation than i ever did in breath of the wild um which is great because that is like one of that's like one of the the few things i was looking for them to improve upon from that last game the one thing i do think is weird about it like kind of the one thing i do think was is is weird about it is that i kept kind of expecting them because you know like traditionally a, a zelda dungeon you go in and then like you know 25 percent of the way through the dungeon they give you some new item or ability or yeah. whatever that changes the dungeon right uh these dungeons at least from, as far as i can tell right now maybe crispy can correct me but it seems to me like just like everything else out in this world these dungeons are meant to be completed using this ability set that they give you at the beginning of the game like you have everything you were going to need super fucking open ended game yes yes yeah yes. it's um well i mean you do get new abilities after you complete the dungeon Yes, and yes. there are even like a couple of abilities that are like side quest things that like you can kind of just skip over and not get. Oh yeah, it seems like it just um, seems to me like even like 
like that ability they give you at the end of the wind temple right and i don't know what the one they gave at the, at the, at the next one is seems to me more like this is an ability that is that you can use to help you better traverse the world but it is not something that you need yeah. to to do any challenge or puzzle or so dungeon I've, or anything like that so i've done three wrong. regional dungeons so far i'm working Re- on you've done three point. yes Oh, you you have played it for like ninety five hours. I was just sitting Maybe. here thinking. Maybe my Schreier brain cannot. Like, I played this game. I, Jason Schreier was like, I played this game for fifty hours, and I haven't. I've all, I haven't even done a dungeon yet, or something. Dude, I, <laughs> I, I'm like my my playtime is over eighty hours, and I know that that is accurate. Like, I, yeah. Yeah, like this game is kind of ruining my life. Like, I, <laughs> like I mean, I did in the best way possible. It's weird, man. I mean, yeah, in the best way possible. But like, I, I have, I am at dangerously low levels of sleep these days. So, but so. So yeah, I've done I've done three dungeons so far, and I can tell you right now that every single ability that you get from these dungeons is one hundred percent worth it. Um, well, yeah, no, I'm not saying they're not worth it, but they're, they're, yeah, I mean, they're not the most worth. It's it. It's not without, without saying like which say which dungeon has the most exciting and useful ability so far. What region are you talking about? Without you, saying what it is useful, like for me because I do a lot of flying, the wind dungeon. Without saying what it is. I'm, I won't say the region wind. He just said wind. Yeah. Said wind. The wind is the, one the that I've, yeah, the wind, the wind temples, the one I've used the most. Yeah. That, that's um, incredible um, for, for flying. It's not like the most exciting though. Uh, like no, the one you get from the water exciting. temple is like kind of a cool idea for an ability, but, um, yeah, it, it seems a little more, hell no, it's not that limited. I just, uh, one thing I don't like is, that the abil- those abilities that you get from the dungeons actually count as like items in your inventory, like in your key item slot. And essentially you have to go into your menu and turn them on or turn them off. Yes. Because because you have like things that float around you when they're active and and like they they interact with like your A button. So like I've actually had times where I was like trying to do something with like items and I hit the A button at the wrong time, like right as one of these things was like passing by me, and it turned on that wind ability, yeah. ability and it just like blew the items away. And I was like, "Oh fuck!" Like, like, like it, it, it's clunky. It's really weird how they how they like separated them from the like the arm abilities, and so made them like less intuitive to like yeah. turn on and off. What what Chris and is talking use. about is that is. It happens to me all the fucking time. Yeah. And it's probably the make- biggest pain point I've experienced with this game. Because it's cool what they're trying to do. And I will not describe what it is because it is a spoiler. Uh, they're cool powers. They're, they're cool powers. But they get in the way of you doing a lot of things. So it's sometimes better to just turn them off entirely than to keep them present. But that being said. I've left, I've left them on because I don't. I, I literally don't feel like going into a menu to turn them off. Yeah, I mean, when you have one, it's, it's when you one have thing. one, like, it's fine. When you have a couple, they they like stack up, or when you, you know, have like three, they're like, like I do. Yeah. Wait, you can have multiple turn on at the same time. Yes. Oh um, Jesus Christ! Okay. I think you can that have them all expensive. turned on when you eventually earn them. Okay. Um. So real quick, just kind of getting back to the dungeon itself, I I do. Well, maybe we don't need to talk about it. I mean, I don't know. I. Well, I mean, I it is like, what you're saying is true. It isn't like you go in and find something like you don't like pick up an item from that dungeon that like changes the experience of that dungeon. But I think that's because they've also kind of designed the lead up to the dungeon to kind of be like part of the experience. And yeah. that lead up tends to, it seems like, be like kind of based around somewhat using the like you get an ability before you go after the dungeon the lead up to the dungeon is kind of like here's some of the puzzles you're gonna be yeah this is like this is kind of what the deal here is and then you get to the dungeon and that's when you're like really doing all the different puzzles with like what you've learned you know yeah um Um, that's i like it i don't i don't think they're like I don't think they're way better than like the dungeons in the first game. I didn't have a problem with the dungeons in the first game. Um, but they're not, yeah, they're not like, they're not like what they were. I, guess. I liked the first, I liked the, the, the wind temple dungeon in this game better than all the dungeons in breath of the wild. Personally. It I, is. 
for me, that's a hardy, that's an improvement. It is kind of um, neat that they're all like the dungeons are kind of like a mystery before you like yeah. actually get to them. It's like, yeah, what it's... is going on here? Like, what? Like, what is causing this? And then you like, yeah, I don't know. That, that's pretty neat. Um, it's, it it kind of it kind of ties into the whole like you know we're asking like well if the whole if the game takes place in Hyrule again how are they making a difference like one of the big ways they're making a difference is because like the events that are linked to these dungeons have changed has somehow changed the world in a dramatic way and it's about yes. figuring out why that change happened which is pretty cool um oh god so i'm still experiencing and again this is probably just because again i have only played like 15 hours of this game at this point um but like i still feel like i am just like when, like I build the most rudimentary shit, and I'm proud of myself, right? It still feels really nice, but I'm just looking at my creation, like, what the fuck? Like, what is this? <laughs> this is like, and then I look at, and then I'm like, I then I get on Twitter for five seconds, and I see somebody like rolling around on like a giant fucking mech or something, and I'm just like, what the fuck? So, Do you somebody have auto in chat, yet, Nick? Uh, yeah, no, no, auto, so auto build that's changes worth, everything for you. Okay, that's worth going I, after really quick. So. Somebody in chat said something like, "You should go back up into the into the Sky Islands and do more stuff there." I don't, I can't get to it. Like, I try to use the rewind thing to to like to like jump on one of those like yeah. falling rocks, and then ru it runs out before I get yeah, anywhere near an towers? island. Yeah, yeah, the towers are what you, you get. Yeah, you use towers. You just okay. Well, I remember in the, watching them do a demo where they they just rode the rock all the so way. So the, the the rocks there are, there are a lot of rocks that just kind of fall out of the sky. You want to look for the rocks that are near where the sky islands are directly ahead, because That's those will take you up to, to them. Do, but also you can just yeah, there are a lot. There. Yeah, and there are a lot of them that just that, just. I mean, you've been up there, right? I don't. When you find okay. a shrine, yeah. But they but the so, sky so most islands of also your, most the of sky. Your, uh, pitiful playtime has been down in on the world not i mean in the and, sky and, or under and, the ground. no i've been underground some but you know most of my time has been spent yeah in on the main oh, star sorry crispy right. what was i saying oh I uh it, it's just because the sky islands like are in clumps so it's like you can go to one that you've already visited but it's kind of hard unless you have like you know, rocket. unless you can build shit and like have good battery power to like go to another like yeah. cluster of sky I'll islands, it's usually easier to find a tower yeah. to go up. I'll go spend some more time in the islands. I mean, also the there's short answer dark is Dark Souls under your feet. So yes, maybe... I know, I know. Yeah, believe me, Brad, like the whole Dark Souls yes. down there, dude. It's okay. wild. Uh, like, like I, uh, uh like we, you know, we were talking about playtime, and Chris Davis is like, like, like. I have to have played at least six hours a day since the game came out to hit the playtime that I'm at. And I believe it. I, I know there was a day where, like, I had a six hour play session and all I was doing was just exploring the underground. And that shit is crazy. Banana, <laughs> like, yeah. that, that shit is so cool. And like it like you're very close, Nick, once you like go down there, especially like in the cent kind of the central, maybe north central area of the underground. Um, and you find a couple of like actual points of interest and you unlock some stuff and you get some resources going like you're very close to like hitting that like exponential increase of like your power and like your yeah. your options to deal with shit like it gets no, I, I, crazy I addictive down, yeah. like like you just need to go find i mean i like I, I don't know where you're at on like guides or anything like that i think i think there's certain things where it's like having a guide just to kind of be like hey you know this is possible right like is super helpful like even just like building things where it's like like you've probably seen that like hover bike that everybody builds now because it's like the most efficient way to get around the game um yeah have you have you seen that i've seen i try like, anytime i see like gifs or anything of of this yeah. game on twitter or something i immediately I, like scroll past it because i'm like i don't i like i want to see it but i don't want to see it like, I, like, I'm still kind of in that kind of, like, honeymoon phase where I yeah. just want to experience as much of it on my own as I possibly the, can. The, the hover bike the, is highly efficient, but it's also very unstable. I've had, had a lot of problems with it. Uh, well, I mean, that's the thing. is like, once you get auto-build, you have the ability to sit and, like, fuss with it. Like, it took me a few minutes of, like, building it and pulling it apart and putting it back together. And then I finally got a version of it that, like, mm, 
perfect fly straight nice nice got it's got good lift takes me everywhere like seriously that whole six hours i was in the depths most of that was just like flying around on this bike and it's yeah. so fucking sick I'm uh ready to get once point, you yeah, once sure. you build it and it's perfect you save it to your favorites in auto build and then you always have it nine yes. zonite boom it's there and it flies exactly the same every single time and it's i like, like the sound of it is it's that you get oh, in the islands no, the, the auto build is in the depths. That's what I'm yes. saying. You have to go explore the yeah. depths a little bit. I haven't done much of the depths if you haven't at least got an auto build. Like yeah. I said, I've only, I've only spent, I've only, I've probably only spent like collectively like an hour in the depths. And it's not, it's not because I was in kind of a rush to go do a dungeon because I wanted, I wanted the answer to that question. Like what are dungeons like in this game more than anything? So I went and kind of focused a lot on that. So I spent a lot of time doing the wind temple area and my time since then, like I said, I just found myself in the situation where I've somehow run out of bows and I'm running around trying to find bows before I go into the depths because nobody wants to go into way, the depths without a bow. They're in creek. Easiest, easiest way to get bows is to kill the goblins. Yeah, yes. and I'm trying. I'm running around the. I'm running around Hyrule Field looking for for yeah, for that's, goblins. That's with, with, go. I have that's one boring. right now, so I'm probably just gonna like roll with. That. <laughs> but, Dude, you know. or or you know what, dude? Like what? Oh fuck, man! Oh, I forgot. Like, I'm sorry. That was that was a little. <laughs> ah, this game just makes me crazy, man. It just makes me crazy. Um, I'm here for it. Once I had once I had auto build and I could like build the hover bike and build like other kind of useful things. Like, you get so many you get so many blueprints in the depths too that are just like useful items to have. Like things you wouldn't even think of or like 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 little like like guide videos that are like, Hey, build these five auto builds and like save them to your thing right now. They're super useful. And it's just like, like a scaffolding that you can use the stakes that can stick into anything. And like now all of a sudden any surface in the game is like climbable or you can ascend it with the ascend ability. Like, yeah. like once you start getting just like a couple of those things, get the bike, even go to fucking Hyrule castle and just like explore around. You find some crazy shit in Hyrule castle. I haven't and even gone super, to Hyrule castle. I've been it's super too. easy to just do like, it's super easy to just, like like oh, i love it so much because it, it like it gives you it, it has that like raid sort of mentality to it where it's like okay I, i'm gonna go to the hyrule castle real quick and i'm just gonna scout for supplies and you go in there and like all right i'll explore this level real quick and and you get everything you can and then there's like a high power enemy and you're like nope fuck that and you run away you get on your bike and you fly away and then like later on when you feel a little more confident you go higher up into hyrule castle and you find a different level with like more rooms that has more cool shit like i found a few like really high power bows and swords in there and like uh, uh, uh. yeah nicholas no i know hey nicholas hey, it's a good the, game. the good news the good news oh i know i was i hope it's very clear that from the very beginning i was <laughs> never know, i know i know i'm not trying to put you in the back foot i know i know but, um, like it is crazy like, uh, like it's crazy because you're not playing the game yet nick and it's about to open up and you're about to go oh the good news is it's a three day weekend this weekend, so uh, four days. I well, good fucking for you. Oh, so, yeah, good for me. Labor Day Jeez. weekend, right? Oh man, hey, great. Let me tell so, you. so when this game finally opens up for you, you've had time to explore it and like see the beauty of it. Thank a union member, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> also, um, uh, I do want to mention. Uh, I would highly encourage people to play a little bit further into the main quest than they would be tempted to because you do get an ability out of one of those quests that allows you to teleport back to pretty much anywhere on the map you've ever been. I don't do that. Oh, I know. I know I, look, I know you are not a fast travel man, oh, but there's dude, other I people in this world. Is it where you can like set travel points? Yes. Yes. How, no. how far in the main? I mean, what do you? What what tree should I start barking up for that ability? Uh, I'm gonna have to look what, it up what, again. I'll uh, I'll get back to you on that. What? Um, l let me stuff? just. You said it's hey, part of the main quest. There's one of the, the main, main quest, quest lines. Yes. Just I mean, go into the, go into your your journal, and there's their like main quests are highlighted. So just do those until yeah. you get it. Um. The, the the kooky old guy that you meet out at Lookout Landing, uh, he talk to him. He's the one. His quest line is the one that gets you that. Kooky, kooky old, guy. old guy. The He's yeah. Kinda, this game is full of freaks. Full of <laughs> freaky dudes. The game yeah. is full of freaks. Um, 
Oh my god! I there was something I was gonna say. And I was like, oh, this is really important. I need to say this. And then Chris Davis uh-huh. interrupted me to do this little thing. And now I've completely forgotten. Thing. I've completely forgotten what it was. Um, fuck me, dead. I've lost it. Man, I have. Too late. I I could tell you stories from this game. I had a what frightening word? encounter today. Oh, is my it gonna god. spoil something? <laughs> uh. No, but it's probably the hardest moment I've had in this game, and it was terrifying because I, I kind of fell in into it, and just it began, and the game issued me no mercy whatsoever. Is is it that one thing? It's that one thing. Okay. Yes, the one thing. The one. Yes. Okay, okay. If, if 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 that's all you're willing to divulge about it, you, you are, I will tell to... you right now what it is. I will say no, no, no. no Don't tell him. Don't tell him. But like, I it is it is like an enemy that he's talking about. And I will say, I've had like multiple people ask me about that. They're like, "Oh my god, did you did you get attacked by this?" And I was like, yeah, "No, I didn't even know. I didn't even know it's... what that. I I didn't know that was a thing. And then it happened to me." scary it's, it's scary. not an it enemy, like it's a series of enemies okay okay i don't want to know stop talking this is, this is like classic chris davis where he's like i'm not gonna spoil anything and, he uh, something and we're like that is exactly what i didn't want you to say mm, <laughs> chris Just chris saying. chris i will talk to you after the podcast and we can discuss this okay so we're not talking about that okay no, whatever it not. doesn't matter uh the point is nick i mean like mm, I don't need anybody here to convince me. That I need, this is like I need you to understand that it's a good video game, and I really yes. hope you play it one day. Well, you know what? Fuck you. I'm putting it down. I really hope you actually play it one day. I like last uh, last night. I was doing a thing where like somebody was like, "Hey, I need 15 logs," and I'm like, "15 logs? That's so many logs." I know exactly what you're like, talking about. How are you gonna do? How am I gonna do all that? So I built a fucking truck out of logs. And was driving across like half of Southern Hyrule, like in my little truck, just truck at like a lumber truck and around and like going over rickety bridges. And, and, and it was like such a nothing little like thing. But I was like, I was having so much fun. It was so fun just to be like, I'm cutting down trees and making a truck. And, and like, ah, Crispy, I did the exact same thing you did, but it had. I had just the worst time building that fucking truck because my because uh-huh. okay, the way that guy was pitching this, it, it has to be 15 trees. But I thought you had to bring them all at the same tree. time. It can't be a palm tree. OK, yeah. so I was like, OK, I got to go all the way outside of the tropical area and transport it all the way back. And so when I get there, it's just a fucking comedy of errors of me constantly having trouble building this fucking thing. And then as I'm driving it, it'll, I'll go like 20 feet and it'll break down. And then there will be a, a, a the AI will throw an encounter at me with enemies that will break my thing. And then just as I got it fixed, the fucking blood moon happened. And all those enemies I've encountered nice. that I fucking killed respawned and fucked me all over again. What should have been 15 minutes if I would have just gone over this one little side area turned into an hour and a half just mm-hmm. – shit storm of idiocy that's what i'm saying is like like talk about dungeons and exploration and all that stuff that stuff is great combat really fun like so many things about this game are just like clicking firing on all cylinders but there's something really really special about like anytime someone just gives you like a little logistical task like anytime they're just like hey can you just like do this for me and you're like okay no, whatever the and then it ends up being like a fucking odyssey of like just what the and fuck Sandy, is going on like there is dude, there is a quest line I, I know about that I am I'm going to do probably this weekend but it involves physically taking one item from one the other side of the map to another just to deliver it one character and you can't put it on a vehicle you, you 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 gotta attach it to your horse and take your horse all the way between those two villages, Is and it's gnome? insane. Please tell and me it's, it's a gnome. <laughs> no, it's not okay. a gnome. That it, would be great. Clorox. Yeah, it's just saying, just saying. No, it's like speaking of little logistical things, <laughs> we do need, we do need to wrap this up. But yeah. speaking of little logistical things, like one thing that I thought was really annoying at first that I now like love is like helping that dude hold those signs up. The sign guy, I know. Addison, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh like, my god, what? these are all like little logistic like every time like, I see him. References. There he I'm was. Like, What's I'm, up with I'm you? I'm helping you him fucking, right now. You dumbass shithead. What's going on, bud? <laughs> Chris Davis, are you? Uh, are you? Yeah, never mind. He's what? playing. Okay. All right, Brad looks like he's about go. to. 
You could hold up the sign with Ultra Hand. Why doesn't he just hammer in the supports while you're holding mm-hmm. it up with Ultra Hand? Because he's video game fucking, logic. Because he's a fucking bitch. Speaking of fucking bitches, it's time to wrap up this show. Uh, with the four player minute, let's do it. Brad, it is your turn. By the Wait, way, if you said if, speaking if, of bitches, so don't you want to go first? Damn. Oh, there, it there it is. By the way, I, I, I've, I've kind of like. Now I want to play Zelda, and now, but I've like already committed to like if this podcast ends before eleven, I said I'd play the demo for uh, Alone in the Dark. Um, oh, well, let's hurry up so you screen. can play the demo and don't bitch out. Come on, um, because you're scared. Um, yeah, you're you got scared. me. You got me. Uh, my four player minute is about how indie games are unfairly scored. Ah, here it is. They're, they're yeah. second class citizens to game journalists. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like the conversation has come up a lot, especially surrounding uh, Fantasy Critic. I've kind of, I don't know if I've sworn off indie games, but you, the potential is lower. And I really kind of, like, looked into it. And I I honestly looked at, uh, part of this is that GQ list. Are you all familiar with this GQ list, 100 Greatest Games of All Time, where they got, like, over 100 game developers. Oh, no. All the known- you know, the most known people out there to like, you know, point scoring system, like everything they got, what are the best games of all time? And they, you know, compiled a list of over a hundred games. So when I say GQ list, I don't mean like some random writer from GQ picked his favorite hundred games. This is the uh, sight and sound of video games, right? Um, I say that because like number 30 on the list is the outer wilds which is makes sense it's one of the best games ever made right it's also at an 86 on metacritic and it got me thinking and like if you look at the games like above like higher up on the list than outer wilds it's like they're all like 90s 92 to 95s to 97s on metacritic there's literal 97s higher on that list than Outer Wilds and when you Outer say higher, Wilds. Do you mean higher or lower? Do you mean like like higher? When I say higher, I mean higher number, like yeah. like fifty. You know, versus that thirty. Like yeah. Mario Galaxy is number fifty, and Outer Wilds is number thirty. And, and you know, like Hollow Knight when it came out on PC in 86, 87 on Metacritic, and I'm like, if the if these games can share the company of the highest rated games of all time. Like, why are they scored so much lower? It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Why? Final Fantasy XIV. Are you looking Wait, what at you this say? fucking list? Okay. What is First this? Of all, don't I do was that now. Don't do that now. You're going to derail. Stop it. Don't do that now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Fortnite. Oh, okay. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I'm saying, I'm saying, like, why the... F- it's so rare that an indie game even enters, like, the 90s, much less the range of the best games of all time. There is a lot of good games on this list. Yeah. Yeah. It, it it's is. not a bad it list. It's, it, you know, it's a good, no, it's, it's, a it, it's a great list of great games, but I'm saying like all of the GTAs and the Mario's and the Zelda's and the, you know, the elder, I'm saying like it's mm. all of the triple a games on the list are the games that are like mid nineties. All of night is 55. So, so why it just you know you know what i'm saying like the people who made this list are a lot of the people who reviewed these games so at the end of the day if they're saying that like outer wilds is a better game than mario galaxy why is mario galaxy a 97 and outer wilds is an 86 you know, you know what i think is interesting though is like it's someone could be up. somebody could be playing and reviewing like let's just say hollow knight right and in their mind they might be doing it. They might even be. They might even be doing it uh, subconsciously. Like they might be thinking to themselves, "This game is amazing," and and then rating it like an eighty six or an eighty seven, right? But like, if it, if it were a triple A game, if it, you know, like they might have those same critiques. Whoa. They might have just naturally given it a nine, and, and like it, it doesn't seem. Whoa. It seems like a nine is the ten for an indie game. Wow, yes. Bloodborne is four, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Stop it. <laughs> Look at it later. Let's go. 
Uh, and guess what number one was? Yeah, it's Breath Stop of the it. Wild. Okay, Breath of the Wild. Here we go. That's a great point because when I brought up like Outer Wilds, people were like, "Oh, well, you know, you know, friction. You know, maybe that's why it's a fucking eighty-six. But then their number one game of all time is Breath of the Wild. Like, no one ever complained about like fucking awkward or annoying systems in that game. Are you fucking kidding me? That's all people said about breath of the wild yet it's well, a 97 i think it's so i think so if, if, if the literal it, a lot of got what got me talking about this is i was just when i was kind of like looking at scores deciding on what to bid and i looked at last year like the gate like fucking tunic tunic which you had higher than elden ring which ed had higher than elden ring yep, yep, you know yep, yep, yep. Um, it's as like the, an 86 as or the game something, of the it? year it's an 85 like yeah. it's one oh, of shit. the best indie games in recent memories. That's insane. Why is that not a ninety five? Tell you why. I'll tell you why. The people who reviewed that game didn't follow the golden path. Okay, so yeah. hey, you know yeah. what? You know what, Brad? I, I like. I get what you're saying, and, and I agree with you for the most part. I would point out though, like because we, like it, it does kind of seem like the point that you're building is that like this has something to do with like the review communities specifically like their take on games and like maybe an inconsistency in that or how like ratings kind of change over time I, there's two things i would say to that first of all this gq list has a lot of developers in it which i mean developers aren't yeah. normally writing reviews so like it is kind of you know, it could it could be a thing where it's like, okay, we've got this entire other community of people who maybe have a slightly different perspective the generally. Also, as someone who listens to a lot of podcasts, reads a lot of indie year stuff, like these games are also like revered by journalists. Sure, 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 sure. Indies. Like, mm-hmm. like, like it, it, like every single one. Like, there's no game on there that's like, oh, uh, well, well, developers love this game, but reviewers hate it. It's just like they all kind of value things differently. You know, it's the same games. They just kind of like. Like the the scoring kind of gets all mixed up, I guess. I don't know because you've got a whole new like crop of people putting their input in, who are coming from a different direction. And the other thing too is like, you know, the number the, like this kind of gets back to the whole number discussion that we've always had, where it's like now that we're playing Fantasy Critic, we are putting way more weight and value on these numbers than like could be put on. Them, but but right? I don't think that, like, that we're adding to it. Like I don't think that actually works into like how we perceive personally how we perceive or value games like we're we're looking no. at those numbers purely from a like we're now we are playing a game so those numbers matter more right? those numbers well, those numbers matter when the game comes out and we right. like haven't played the game that's but really I, the I, only time they 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 matter oh I'm, I'm not even talking about for fantasy Creek. i mean in general like when right. a game comes out and gets scored that really only matters for like that want like like you could go back five years later buy a game you know at 95 percent off and it doesn't matter if the game got like a 62 when it came out if you're kind of interested in it and you've got time to kill and it's like five bucks you're like yeah, fuck it whatever you know like and, and obviously you're gonna have a completely different experience than like whoever reviewed it and I, I like i know that's not like groundbreaking revelation or anything but like like review scores in general are kind of just like a barometer of individual people in the moment in that like very specific moment of the game has just come out and like this is the new thing and we're comparing it to like everything else we've ever played versus like how some games age and i think it's totally reasonable that like certain pieces of art just kind of like take on new contexts the longer they've been around where it's like man we really slept on that one or like yeah maybe we all were just fucking crazy that first week that bioshock infinite came out and then like a month later realized oh no this actually sucks like you know i I will say (laughs) this there's nothing about like outer wilds like for example that is not wasn't like fucking stunning breathtaking shocking i can't believe they're doing this from minute one and people were like recognizing that and and yeah like i think the point is if like rockstar or or something had made outer wilds and it was like a it was quote unquote a triple a game that game would easily be scoring if you went back but if you asked like that fucking Ratchet and Clank game that came out last year or two years ago is at like a ninety, right? Let but me, like that's that's nowhere near this fucking list. You could do the top two hundred games; it wouldn't be on that sure. fucking list. Yet it scores like that. Like, come on. Like, well, let me, let me is an eighty four on Metacritic, and it's literally one of the best games ever made. Like, do you think? Fuck? Do you think that if you took everybody who reviewed Outer Wilds when it came out, 
and and gave it a review that contributed to that 85. If you took all of them, asked them to review it now, do you think that score would go higher or lower? I, I well, I mean, it, it that does happen when like with like re-releases, you know, like legacy like, does affect scores, but like how come at the time it seems like when when an indie game comes out and it has no legacy, it's like, oh well, the ceiling is a nine, right? Of course, it's an indie game. It's like you see fucking nines all over the place, but like Return know, of the Oberdin is an eighty nine on Open Critic. It's like the closest mm-hmm. I've seen coming to a ninety. No, 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 no. There is, but but even that, right? Like it seems low. Fucking hold on, hold on, hold on. I just said Ratchet and Clank, fucking Insomniac, like is a fucking know. ninety. Listen to me. Return of the Oberdin is one of the greatest video games ever made. One, two. I feel like the only indie game to actually enter into like that fucking greatest game of all time territory is Hades. That's at a 94 on open critic. And that's like the only indie game I really see enter the mid nineties range. Disco is like, up there too, but like, but I'm saying if they but this is why the review company scores are wild. Of, the, of the highest rated games of all time, why are they not scored like that? But, that's crazy. Did, to me. But this is why, I don't know. Like, I agree, but also, like, isn't this kind of predicated on an assumption that all review scores are, like, a single set of data that, like, are referencing each other? Because, like, I like I don't think that's the case. And I don't even know that it should work like that. Like, right? Like, no, is it really, like, 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 do we get a better picture if, like, someone reviews 10 games in a year, gives a game at the beginning of the year, 90, goes back you know has played a bunch of games and then at the end of the year plays another game that maybe they think is actually better but now their reviews like their review score is kind of like deflated a little bit so I they mean, only give it like an 85 this all started because of a, a, a fantasy critic first of all so like i know right. it's it, like even like giving that much power to like scores is like a silly thing it's just a trend i noticed right you know stuff like I mean, like dude it, it, signalis yeah. and all these games which is an 82 on metacritic i'm like what it what what it, 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 there ah. there is something strange and it, it 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 it's 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 kind of it's impossible for it to get to the bottom of it. it's kind of a rhetorical question right we're never going to find the answer to it but like yeah. i think about it in terms of like our own list and shit like we do a top 10 list every year right and then we go and do my t- i do i go and do my top 10 games of all time and i don't take into account at all where those games that i rank in my top my, my goat list ranked in the year that they came out there are games high in my top 10 games of all time that were like number six or number seven on in the year that they fucking came out and i realized that and i but because because that i realized that now and i think it's weird as shit but it's also that also just calls into questions like yes the, all these lists all these numbers that we come up with the rank shit like it's just it's all dumb it's all just like a representation of like how we feel in the moment playing that one it's particular not, game it's but not like, dumb I, it's just it's just not something that we should grip so tightly you know right right but 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 I do also see where Brad's coming from because like especially I know we're only analyzing it a little bit more deeper now because of Fantasy Critic. But like when you start to look at like if you, if you were to pick the ten best indie games, in our opinion, of the last four or five years, right, and you put them all in a row and look at their 80s. like let's just they're all in the fucking eighties, and like that like there I don't think there'd be like I think Hades might be the one exception. Where it broke into the 90s. And it's just so fucking weird. Like Hollow Knight, Return of the Oberdin, Outer Wilds. All of those seems like those should be right up there with some of the best games ever made. Mario games, Zelda games, Final Fantasy games. Like, no question. You know what's interesting? Like, like, could could this be indicative of, like, not a lesser opinion of indies, but, like, maybe a like a higher opinion of like indies we're them to a it's, like, it's gotta be better to get a better score because like we think some of the best games that have come out in the last 10 20 years have been that's a great indie games that is a great devil's advocates but like, to take. yeah but like fucking uh, ubisoft can put out an assassin's creed game that's like okay cool like a fun open world action game i mean it didn't suck so it's a 92 you know like <laughs> this is weird <laughs> that's weird all right Thank you for your four player minute, Brad. Really appreciate that. Yeah, sorry. Um, apparently, I'm not playing alone in the dark tonight. It's, we have two minutes until 11 o'clock. All right, Chris Davis. Go. Okay. I, I, I haven't decided yet. I might actually play it. We'll see how I feel. 
Okay, Nick, do, are you going to talk about Alone in the Dark, or are you going to talk about Sony? Neither, technically. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll try to fit both in. I like how Chris Davis thinks he has me figured out. Like, I know what your four player minutes well, going to be. I figured you'd talk that. about Alone in the Dark. So, I mean, I guess I just want to mention, uh, we, we didn't get to cover it much tonight, but uh, there was a, a developer kind of like insight video that came out. They uh, called it a showcase. <laughs> showcase event. From I watched Key Nordic weird. for Alone in the Dark. Um, and it was a developer interview and some limited gameplay of Alone in the Dark. Um, they revealed that David Harbour is, uh, and uh, Jodie Comer are the two primary uh, characters that you play as in the game. Mm-hmm. It sounds like they're going for a Resident Evil 2 style experience where, uh, depending on who you play as, the game will play out differently. Uh, they're going which, for that Leon Claire shit. Hey, um, I'm, I'm all for that. It sounds pretty I'm good. I'm all for it too. I just want to point out, I watched that whole showcase video as someone who's curious about Alone in the Dark, right? Uh, that was one of the weirdest videos I've ever watched, just in terms of like how it was constructed and like how they talked about it. And like, I was just like, what is this? It's just like, I don't know. I don't think that necessarily has any reflection on like how the game is going to be but like man you want to talk about weird marketing videos go watch that alone in the dark showcase it's it, it was really weird like three quarters of it was like just talking about the characters and like the atmosphere but just like showing you walking around the world doing normal stuff without spooks and then like the last 90 seconds of it is them actually showing combat and spooks it was weird um yeah, just decided you use the word spooks twice. I thought it was very strange. Sorry. Hey, whatever. But I will say that I have learned some things about this that make me feel more positive about the project. Uh, for one, the original director from the 92 original Alone in the Dark game is involved and is signing off on this project. So that, also, that feels like kind of a good dr- sign. He was in that video and he was a little strange. He was a little strange. I mean, he was a little strange. But, yeah, but hey... I mean, it, I, Whatever, I don't that's, care about that. But also, it's fine being strange, but come on. The game, the writer for the game is the guy who was the lead writer on Amnesia the Dark Descent and Soma. So that gets points in my book because I uh, like the narrative for those games. That sounds probably you, you know what has me the most excited? I mean, I, I just think I think it's a really cool vibe. And they're like they're using uh, what do they call it in the video? They talk they spend a bit of the video talking about like the musical inspiration and they called it like. Like, uh, oh, God, it was like jazz. Oh, God, like evil jazz or I forgot what it was. like. Yeah, the, like he used, the, he used the like, composer a weird buzzword. Was very, yeah, talking about it. He used a weird buzzword to talk about, and then he he specifically was like they were trying to capture this like noir detective vibe, and they ended up going with like dark jazz or something like that as like their inspiration. I was like, I like the sound of this, and I kind of like like the old noir detective, uh, you know, vibe that they've got going. I hope it delivers. I, like I said, I might end up playing the the prologue demo, which is not like the act from the actual game. It's like a you play as like a little girl or something. It's like a demo, Dead Rising so. Case Zero, you know. It's like it's like yeah, a little yeah, yeah. sampler. So I might try that on the feed after we finish recording here. So yeah. maybe stick around if you're watching us live or check out the. Uh, but the, the other the thing I wanted to whatever. talk about was the PlayStation Showcase and what was not there. Um, we I mean, we talked about it a little bit at the beginning, but like that was a, a great was that was a great list of third party titles. There were three first party projects from Sony there and two of them were CG trailers and one was Spider-Man. Like this is weird. This is Sony's like big showcase event of the year. Where the fuck is most of their studios? Like Ben Studio, not there. Blue Point, not there. Naughty, Naughty Dog, Dog, not there. Steam Although Sony, Dog, not why, there. Why do we think this is their their only big showcase well, for the this was the, this was their e3 showcase whatever this that means their, what, but, what does that really mean i mean i mean they, they can do anything they want but they, yeah, theoretically they, they could do one for gamescom all the time where they in two months they do another thing and also yeah. also uh naughty dog has said that they still intend to announce their game their multiplayer last was game this year so it just means they didn't choose yeah. to announce it at the showcase but also, also if like you ask where, any, where's... if you ask any developer like like the answer to your question of where was this is it wasn't ready to show yeah Plain sure okay it but wasn't like, ready to show 
But like, where's London Studio? Where's Sucker Punch? Where is not Team ready. Asobi? Ready. Where is the next Astrobot game? That feels like that should have been that should have been perfect for this. And like, it's not here. Like, yes, this. This was a great way for Sony to say, hey, we've got a lot of games from third-party partners coming out. A lot of them are going to be PS5 exclusive or, or available on PC. We're also, we're also proud that we're honoring our contract with Bungie and allowing them to do multi-platform stuff. I gotta stuff. say, but as like, someone who's been going like, where are these games for like Microsoft since, I don't know, 2014? Oh, Microsoft deserves shit. tons like, oh, of shit. What's the Sobe doing? I mean... Microsoft okay. deserves hey. a ton of shit for like hey. announcing games way too fucking early and taking 15 years for them to come out. I'm just but, saying, like saying, where's Ghost of Tsushima 2? I mean, like, look, man, these studios make games, they ship games, people like their games. I don't think you need to worry about Sony's first party, to be honest. Yeah. Not yeah. right, not these days. September, they always do that Last of Us like yeah, outbreak I mean, day or whatever that's probably where we'll hear about the i'm saying i think it's a little true, too yeah. soon for for doom and gloom with i'm not i'm issues. not doom and glooming this i'm just wondering like doom? where where's my where he's look. merely pointing out he's merely pointing out once again that no he has a point i'm just more I, i'm more showcase. skeptical of the importance people have placed on this e3 showcase that sounds like more of a narrative that we constructed more than sony nah dude there was an hour-long presentation that yeah that right. dude that pre they, that presentation that presentation 100 percent would have been what was on stage at a sony press conference at e3 100 percent. when's the last time sony's been on a stage at e3 that's not the point dude these big sh everybody expects these big showcases in may june july now it's it's usually june because of e3 but now e3 doesn't exist anymore so may june july around this time right so all like i'm saying is 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 we do this we've been doing this for the past few years look it's summertime or it's it's june time right all these publishers they still have these showcases but they are never ever even close to what they used to be years ago during actual height of E3. They're just not. We do this every time and we're all like, I was expecting more. I was expecting I more. I am and never they, like they that. just spread this shit out all year long because they don't have to do, dump it all in one place like they used to. They all still have showcases, but every year it's the same. All right, we can move on. For the past half decade. But seriously, though, it was an hour long presentation with literally nothing but trailer, 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 yeah. trailer, just continuous thing. So, yes, the expectations were pretty high. Trailer Everybody had trailer, those expectations. Most of it was I mean, CG, we, if we're being honest. We, we all, I mean, that's that's E3, dude. We all n know we were going to be disappointed on some level. It's just kind of surprising the reasons in which we find ourselves disappointed. At, but whatever. Crispy, it's your turn. Uh, well. I guess I'll use my four-player minute to say once again that I think Marathon looks like it could be pretty cool. I am, watch that trailer, huh? I am genuinely excited to see Bungie making a game that isn't Destiny, even though I still like Destiny, and I'm actually kind of excited about the new season that just started. They added fishing, and it's like a... It's like a Yeah, they added fishing, and it's like a big part of the loot rotation this season now, so it's like you kind of have to like go fish. And, like, they brought back a hand cannon that I really loved, that everybody really loved. I loved it because it looks cool. Everyone else loves it because it's, like, really good or whatever. But I'm not a fucking, you know, fucking dirty so like, min-maxer like that. I'm in it for the glam, but it looks fucking sick. Spare rations is back, baby, baby. So, like, it, feel, it feels to me like we didn't talk about the final shape. The the Cade 6 or 7 we, story that... Dick. That what are you doing? I mean, I'm we didn't talk about like, that. They put out a little teaser. Uh, they put out a little cinematic teaser for the final shape, which is okay. You talked for twenty minutes about. <laughs> no, no, I know, I know. Sorry. They put out a little cinematic teaser for the last, last Destiny Two update or the last update of the Light and Dark Saga, whatever. Like the end of their current story arc. Uh, and apparently, Cade Six is back. I mean, that's Nathan really Fillion, know. right? Yeah, yeah, that's Nathan Fillion. Although last time when when they killed K Six and Forsaken, he wasn't played by Nathan Fillion. He was played by, uh, um, 
But now Nathan, Nathan, Nathan Fillion's Drake. back. Nathan Drake. Oh. Oh, Nolan yes. North? Nolan, Nolan North. North yeah. No, uh, yeah, but now the Nathan Fillion's end. back. He he put out a video that's like, I'm back, baby. And everyone's like, oh, fuck yeah. Great. We love you. <laughs> I guess. Or, I mean, there might be a bunch of people playing now who don't even know who the fuck Kate Six is. <laughs> that was a while ago. That but, I mean, was a long time ago. But my Destiny question years. to you, Crispy, is if the final shape is the final piece of DLC for Destiny 2, and. It's not. Okay, well, like I mean, they've what, already they've already been like, like, you know, fucking softening that for a while now. Okay, well, I mean, it's, just it, my, they're, what they're saying is it's the end of the light and dark saga. Okay, I don't I don't know what that means from an outside perspective, but like it seems the, from the way it's being marketed, it feels like Bungie is sunsetting Destiny Two, and their their big new thing is going to be Marathon. Like, do you think they're going to be able to support two uh, no. lot live service yeah. games at once? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a big part of why they're back at Sony now. OK, yeah. they're not they're not getting like I'm telling you that Destiny is not going to be done in like a year. Like that, that is their That's their thing. You saying know? Destiny is ending would be like saying trying to say World of Warcraft is ending. It's like I mean, it's it, just like like I'm not. That's not even like the fanboy in me being like, no. It's like, dude, that's that is entirely like what like. So they're working. I guess they're they've been working on two or maybe three non Destiny related projects, and I assume Marathon is one of them. Um, they have others that aren't announced yet, but like. That whole studio has been geared towards Destiny support, and like the amount of work that they have been putting into it, I I can't see them doing these complete overhauls like every six months if they're planning on dropping the project in a year. Like that just doesn't. It just seem it's right. it's it's hard enough for a lot I, of studios out there to do to support a live service title for a yeah, lot, but long we don't. Time, but two we don't for really, Bungie that feels like a lot. We don't really. That's based on nothing. <laughs> like we don't really know. We don't know what their situation is. They were already a pretty big company, and now they're now they're you know under the Sony umbrella again, which means they have whatever resources Sony is going to help them out with. Which I'm sure that was a huge part of why they agreed to get bought again anyway was because they wanted to have that more robust support behind them. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think I don't, I, I, I don't think that I don't think Destiny's going away anytime soon. I should go watch that marathon trailer. The, 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 the discussion isn't, oh, they're replacing Destiny with Marathon. That's crazy. The discussion is, what do they do after Final Shape? Do they just start a new Destiny 2 saga? Do they try to rebrand destiny 2 into something else or do they actually like build a new destiny from the ground up because i mean the amount of money they must be making off of eververse alone and season passes no way no fucking way like that's just not happening they like, got a cash cow on their hands yeah no fucking way i don't buy it i don't buy it all for right. a minute all right is it my turn yeah sure shut up all right, I'll keep this. I'll keep this brief, like under a minute, maybe. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Alan Wake Two specifically because the fact that it was it was announced in a surprise twist that it's going to be a digital only release. I think it's finally triggered something in me. I think I think I'm going to start the slow process of transitioning to digital only. Going, I'm not going to like go and do something crazy like sell my whole collection or anything stupid like that. But I, I think starting in 2024, I am going to start only buying physical in very limited situations. Um, it's become clear that we've officially reached a point now where games are too big to fit on a disc. Uh, I mean, I know it's, it's kind of been that way for a while. I know there's, and that argument has always existed about the day one patch situation. But still, it's just become it's become exhausting as a collector. It's become fucking exhausting. Um I like I do still think I'm going to like buy physical games for like in situations where it's just a game that I'm really, really fucking excited. Like the Final Fantasies out there, uh, you know, 
the Resident Evil games when they come out, uh, I might still dip physical into it, you know, go buy a physical copy. But um, like they announced that Alan Wake is digital only. And while I was sad for like a half a second, it didn't kill me. It didn't like shatter my world. Right. And I was kind of like I was just like, fuck it, whatever. I st- I went and pre-ordered the game anyways. Like I don't like I just want to play Alan Wake 2. And I just realized, uh, sure, I would love to have a physical copy of it. But if if you're telling me that that game would come out and it would still require a download because it can't fit on a disc, it's it's really serving no point other than being just a thing on my shelf. Um, which, again, if they announce a physical copy down the road, I'll probably double dip and I'll probably buy it um, because it's Alan Wake. And that's a that's a game on my goat on my goat list, you know, but like, for instance, Street Fighter six. Right. I want to play Street Fighter six. I don't think I was excited enough about Street Fighter six to say I need to own that in a physical format. Uh, so I think I'm going to start in 2024. Have you like, I, I you know, I'm just going to start seeing if I can start shifting my viewpoint a little bit and start changing my habits and cutting back on the number of physical, physical games that I own, um, which is a real turning point for me. It's a big step, you know, you know, I've finally accepted that I have a problem and I'm going to start, uh, we'll start <laughs> doing something about it i guess i don't know um but yeah i didn't think alan it was kind of a weird thing because i didn't think alan wake was going to be the thing that really triggered that in me but it kind of did so here we are that's it that's my four player minute that's my final thought take us out nick all right um thank you guys for listening i know it's been a long show but a lot a lot of like i said a lot of stuff to cover tonight um, and there's going to be a few more like that probably in the coming weeks because we have Summer Game Fest coming up. We have the Starfield showcase that Microsoft's doing. Uh, I'm sure Nintendo will eventually have something uh, for us to talk about. So, you know, we're, we're getting into it and uh, there'll be a lot of stuff to talk about. And of course, more Zelda. And uh, we got Diablo coming up. We got fucking Street Fighter. We got Amnesia. We got all kinds Woo! of shit coming out. In the, in the, in the, in, next month's going to be fucking Diablo wild. Diablo 4, Nick. That's what I said. Did I say, what did I say? Oh, I don't know. What did you say? I said Diablo. I okay. think so. I think I said, I think I said Diablo. System um, Shock, Nick. Sis- yes, I do. Important I'm so... games, big important games coming out. Oh, I thought I was going to have System Shock to play this weekend. Now I got to play Zelda. Ooh. Fuck. Oh, System oh, Shock, poor Street baby. Fighter, Diablo no. 4, these are all going to the moon. The Expanse I... is going to suck. <laughs> wow. Anyways, wow. Uh, again, guys, if you're, if, if, you're, if you're listening to the show and you have not kind of can, keeping up with our fantasy critic, uh, one, you're crazy. This is fun. It's great. It's a good time. Go check it out. Uh, of course, if you're not already, please join us in Discord at discord.gg slash four player. And of course, you can find all of our podcasts over at fourplayernetwork.com or on any podcast service that you happen to use. We're on pretty much all of them at this point. Um, leave us a review. Support us on Patreon if you'd like. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, we don't have a ton of overhead these days, but it does uh, help us pay hosting costs and stuff. So we'd really appreciate your support. And, um, Anyways, we'll see you next Thursday night for another episode. So in the meantime, take care, be good to each other, play video games. Good night.